Yeah, I do like trying to predict what you're going to say so I can answer before you ask the question. Is that what you do? Well, sometimes, yeah. Like, I did it He's, pretty well the, wait, the other day. you are oh, so the good. the bookshelf moment. The bookshelf moment. Yeah. Oh, man. Jen walked up and looked at the bookshelf with intention. <laughs> and I knew right away she was looking for a particular <laughs> book that she wanted to read before dinner. Okay. And she had not spoken the name of this book or said yes. anything about it in not not like a day or two, like three weeks. But I knew since we because of the time of day book. and whatever, she like walked up. So I walk over as I'm walking to the bathroom and I pull the book out and just like stick it right there and then just <laughs> walk away. And it, like Aww. I'm like, well, in case it's not the one she's looking for, I'm not going to be like, here it is. But I was like, draw her attention to it. And then it was the one. I was was like, yeah, victory. That is is impressive. I was like, how did you know? He's like, what did you say? You remind me of Kyle, my brother. (laughs) You're telling this story. And I'm like, that sounds like something he would do. I was like, how did you read my mind? I said nothing. (laughs) Yeah. That there are only so many reasons you'd go to the bookshelf, and it wasn't for Harry Potter. Harry Potter, or whatever he was thinking. Yeah. Oh, like, uh, oh, it's not so for a funny. journal, and I know where the Harry Potter book is, so <laughs> that yeah. was hilarious. Did I tell you guys that story of when my brother read my mind that one time? I feel hmm. like, yes, we, but I don't so we play this was. game, it's like a movie game where we'll say, Oh, yes, <laughs> oh, yes, well, we're always quoting movies, and it's you got to figure out what the quote is. But we were doing a game where it was, we were. Oh gosh, we were picking an actor or an actress and correlating correlating them to a movie, and then from that movie picking another actor or actress, <laughs> and then like it was like a trail oh, wow. of like actor actress yep. movie every other, but it had oh, to all gosh. be connected. So we're doing that, and I didn't even say anything, and he just like looked at me because we were like doing clues of something, <laughs> and he just read my mind, like he that he followed great. my trail of thought. Yep. And I just stared at him and I was like, that was weird. <laughs> like, how did you know? He was like, I don't know. I just like, we think similarly. Yep. But yep. anyway, all that to say. Wow. That just reminded me of that. I do That's remember funny. you saying that. Yeah. It was weird. So you guys read each other's minds now. Well, we he, married a few Well, we try. We try. Right? Each we no, practice. he reads my mind <laughs> more than I can read his, which is scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You did say that last night. And I was like, hmm. I'm not trying to be hard to read, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I'm just uh, poker face all the time. He's a good Aquaman's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't Always like it. Always blocking. <laughs> Dude, open up. Yeah. Yeah. Literally open be up. Be vulnerable. <laughs> I think um, words do open me up, um, but I, I am my mind is still blocked. So I'm hard to read, even though I'm very easy to ask questions to. Yeah. So that's the key. Like that. <laughs> it true. is a weird hmm. combo, but yeah. I, well, I'll, I'm only thinking that because I've experienced that with other people too, especially um, if you think they're always angry. You know, they've yeah, got yeah. RBF. And oh, you, my they're gosh. They're the kind of people yes, that you're like, I know I'm just someone. not going to speak to mm-hmm. them, you know. Yeah. But then like once you do, you're like, oh, they're so pleasant. You just ask them anything, talk about stuff. You get to know them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's a thing. So that's you? Um, sometimes, I mean, but maybe. more in my ability or other people's ability to read my mind. Hmm. Maybe it's hard. It can be hard. I'm learning. It doesn't seem like it to me, but. <laughs> no, the best is when he's doing a project of any sort. Oh, yeah. If I, I do look angry. it is art or <laughs> when we were, what was it? Knitting or painting or anything. He is seriously in tune <laughs> with whatever project it is. <laughs> and you can giggle, laugh, make like side comments, jokes, and look over, and he will not look away from the project. Dedication. And it's mm. serious. <laughs> Get in the zone, and you I'm know? like, you're That's no fun. That, it's like, have no. fun with this. Come well, on. When we do that paint <laughs> thing, everyone's like focused on it, and Danny's pulls his up, and it's a masterpiece. <laughs> oh, all of ours my were like, gosh. here's a tree, and yeah. Danny's like, here's 13 million branches branching <laughs> out of gorgeous. this one little thing. It was that was incredible. so annoying. <laughs> but I was in the zone. Annoying. I didn't even, I forgot there were other people But you there. know what? Mine comes out not as good as yours, but I had so much more you, fun. You have a lot of fun. <laughs> but the thing is, I also have fun that we just have fun different ways internally <laughs> you're like and then afterwards you're like were you mad i'm like no i was having a blast yeah. oh my <laughs> god it was so much fun this, yeah. that was so funny that was this beginning of this year we went to a pottery mm-hmm. class yeah. and like i couldn't talk to him and i was like did i say something like i'm just gonna focus just on my own zone. pottery thing yeah i didn't i didn't know and he was like what are you talking about i was having so much fun and I was like, <laughs> "You're like, I want you to have fun with me, not just with your pottery." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Um, speaking of Potter, 
Hey. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that was a good transition, Jen. We're going to start a store called Harry's Pottery. Mm. We, should, we, need, we need to start a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Bookstore. <laughs> pottery oh, man. Store. That, that one coffee shop, though, reminds me of your... Which one? Dream. The one we were just talking about. Um, to a... Oh, the boot uh, highway. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, it is. You would honestly, you'd really like it. And you you'll again. you'll have to go. <laughs> it's okay. And it's going to be nice. I like it when a coffee shop becomes like a wine bar. Wait, somewhere can you rewind? Relaxing. Sorry. I heard your voice, but oh, I was, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. finishing my <laughs> That's thought. Right. And I was trying to distract from your thought. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, but I wasn't uh, following because yeah. I got stuck. <laughs> well, I like when a coffee shop becomes like a hang later and it's good for old people mm. like me. I don't want caffeine. So they right. have good decaf options and wine and live mm-hmm. music. So then you can kind of let it be artistic. Yes. Musical. It's, wine. Yeah, there's a I big want. shop and it's open to like 10. It was nice. Yeah. I don't know if that's only on the weekends. Have you ever been there? I've never been. Oh, that, that's here. like your vibe, I think. Yeah. What do you I'm think? I'm going to walk in with my Harry Potter sweatshirt. I think so. I think it oh, is. Okay. His vibe. <laughs> never mind. Um, well, it's just hard to tell because I don't think vibe? John's ever like pointed out a coffee shop, you know, and been like, yeah. this well, is. Well, that's true because you don't, well, maybe you don't enjoy coffee. Maybe they yeah. have tea. I forgot yeah, about good that. Good tea house, a good tea shop. Mm, all we know about coffee shops is John sometimes hits on tennis women in them. This is true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That was my With one story. With secret notes. Yeah. You, remember, you don't remember that story? Remember this. It was the love of my life. The love of your life? What, Tonks? Was Who was in a coffee that. shop? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was a girl that walked into a coffee shop and we were flirting with our eyes. And then uh, before I left, I um, dropped her a note. I thought um, it was in a coffee shop. I thought it was in the library. Mm-mm. No, no. Uh, but what was the coffee shop like? And was it your vibe? Um, it was. It was. It wasn't necessarily my vibe. Okay. But it was a coffee shop that was really close to my apartment, and mm-hmm. I would steal their Wi-Fi. So I'd go there, like buy a water, and then just steal their Wi-Fi <laughs> nice. for like five hours. <laughs> um, the whole good trade-off. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> but it was like very industrial. It was like an industrial coffee house. So oh, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like more industrial than Starbucks. It was, it wasn't like the coziest place. Oh, this one's mm. cozy. Yeah. Give me a good cozy. Yeah. Shop. I do like when this one has cozy. like nooks and stuff. This oh, was man. good. Yeah. We got yeah. go. three nooks. level of stairs, not like level Ooh. levels. They're oh. like two steps. That's lovely. I love that. Cause that adds like Dimension. character to the yep. space. Yeah. And then and it helps you feel like, like separated were... from other people yeah. when they're like, mm. and they have it set up with like a desk and like drawing stuff that just has so paper obviously. and it has pens colored pencils and it looked like they were hanging up people's artwork too i'm sure you had to you know make it but we were doing our own little advertising for oh. us <laughs> for us <laughs> yeah for us um jen was drawing dobby it yeah. was it was okay it was okay <laughs> honestly it was a pretty good dobby here's why because if someone looked at it, they would know it was Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance if they had never seen it, they might think it was Yoda. Or um, but if a they Lord of the Rings, both Star Wars yeah. and seen Star Harry Wars. Potter, they about, would know it was Dobby. Um, what's his name from Lord of the Rings? It kind of looked like that too. <clears throat> um, a Gollum look. Mm. Yeah. No, don't worry. He it was strong yeah. Dobby. Yeah, the cute They'll eyes. Know. They'll know. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the ears. If Gollum had those big mm. ears, it would be mm. like Gollum's ears are, yep. are more normal. That's fair, yeah. <laughs> but it was, oh, yeah. I think we left them there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so should we raise our glasses to Moody? Are are we confirming that he's officially dead? No, I, I still have some hope, but I'm gonna raise <laughs> my they glass. They haven't found the his body, exactly. And the polyjuice thing's getting me. A little. But here's the thing: what I'm raising my glass to is not his death but his willingness to take a hit for Harry. Mm. So it's I'm saying he's noble. I'll cheers to him whether he's alive or not. And he's worthy. And if we find his body and he's dead, then, you know, he gets a solemn cheers. But if he comes heroically back and he's alive, <laughs> then he gets an even bigger cheers. <laughs> We're so, the cheers uh, but for now, you know, it's a couple of things we could raise our uh, fire whiskey to. What are the other things we're raising our fire whiskey to? Well, I feel like still, again, to Dumbledore, because I don't think we gave, like, proper... I feel mm. like it takes a long time, you know? And then this also, it the again will? is showing that he was thinking ahead. He updated his will whenever he needed to, to say, hey, if I don't make it, I'm going to make sure there's something in place to help these kids do what they need to do. So that's that's thinking ahead, and I like that. 
Um, and then I guess we could start to cheers for Lupin and Tonks, right? Yeah. And then and then Bill and Floor. Bill and Floor for the wedding soon. Yeah. Um, if it happens. Whoa. His birthday. Harry's birthday. <laughs> yeah, Harry's Harry. birthday yeah. So lots if of it things happens, to cheers. Hold on. You don't think the wedding's going to happen? No, I don't know. Maybe. What, do you think someone's going to call it off? <laughs> no, 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 not oh. call it off. Like, Who there's going to be an event. Off? And, like, Mrs. They can't Weasley get would call it off. Mrs. Weasley, out of Although stress. Although, she, yeah, she's doing so much, she would just be like, I can't do this anymore. Just... Hmm. Hmm. Poor little stress bell. Bill seems a little quiet, but I think he's still <laughs> confident. Maybe he's just a little nervous. Yeah. Um, I don't think either of them would call it off. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to call it off. I just thought maybe get interrupted by yeah. something. Yeah, having a wedding in the spot where the most hunted man on earth mm-hmm. is is risky, to say the least. Um, so, yeah. But as fair. Laura says, she's good looking enough for the both of them. So it mm. doesn't matter about Bill looking like a werewolf. Well, apparently <laughs> that's the her parents are like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His Husband's dad, a little squat. His, yeah, the dad is and, short, like a yeah, foot yeah. shorter <laughs> and pudgier or Nas. I don't know what they described it as. I forget. Oh, and to Hedwig. Thank you. Oh. Hedwig, good call. Can't forget Hedwig. And to our new hot tamale. And to our new hot tamale. Yeah. What was her name? Natalie? Natalie, yeah. All right. Glad you're joining Ooh, the hot tamales. That was good sound good cheers, cheers. <laughs> Ooh, That was loud. That was really loud. He's like, let's break, break the glass. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> aggressive cheers what do you guys before we like officially start give it's me quick yummy. thoughts on what you think of albus dumbledore's will Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> i'm this so is... glad we caught that on camera <laughs> <laughs> breathing fire over here <laughs> she Ooh. made like three different face expressions in like a second <laughs> <laughs> what what would it start replay of i can't <laughs> It was like, oh, this is nice. It's almost festive. Oh my goodness, this is hotter than I thought. (laughs) Ah, my mouth. (laughs) Everyone's watching. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. Sorry, John. What were you saying? I don't even remember. That was perfect. Give us us the rundown of the facial (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, That'll be the intro of the podcast. (laughs) I don't know. I can't see my face. (laughs) She just. (laughs) (laughs) It was like good old Ogden. Shock. Everything you said. It was like shock. This kind of tastes good. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Aftermath. This is, ah. Aftermath. This is the first time I've ever had Fireball. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. I've had it one time. Long, long time ago. Um, I've had it a that few times. That. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Uh. <laughs> oh, look. The first time readers having the first. <laughs> there we go. Well, first time sippers. Not, well, I mean, with your face, it was your first time. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> Oh boy! Mm. Oh, you know what I had it with? I had it with um, hard cider the first time I had it. So it was like oh, that's a good idea. Drink. Yep, yep. Oh, nice. <laughs> this would this is good for hot drinks. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Is there such a thing as fire whiskey? I think that is what this is. Yeah. When she wrote it, I feel like she yeah. must have been picturing this because I looked around and I don't think there's anything else equivalent. Yeah. But Unless there is in, in England, and, yeah, and I, the, I didn't want to like do anything too drastic, but. I'm surprised there isn't already an Ogden's Fire Whiskey that tastes pretty much like this, but yeah. a little better, maybe. I mean, no offense to Fireball, but yeah. <laughs> a little more, um, a little more subtle. classy. The kind of thing you would Fireball. actually cheers somebody uh, yeah. if you think they died. Tastes like, um, but what are those like cinnamon? Yeah, candy yeah, we're just saying things? that. Yeah. Oh, a hot. No, no, no. We, we were saying that way before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, I went in my own head again. Literally repeating hot tamales. Exactly no, they're not hot tamales. Uh, I was like, Mike, they're red hot. Oh, yeah. I know, yeah, yeah. Red hot. Well, we, yeah, yeah. That's oh, what Jenna said. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are good. I actually like those. Were those, Ooh, hard were those cider. little? Or were those like? Yeah, those? they're little in a box. I thought. And we were saying were big those? red, the gum. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. the hot tamale things we actually brought here. I don't remember what they taste like because we didn't eat them. It was like a, <laughs> yeah, it was we, like I still have big. those if you guys want to try those. It was a red thing, but hmm. they were hot. Like, <laughs> I think I know what Maybe you mean. My siblings would remember. What the heck and I don't think called? it was big red because like those were a little like. Wrapped. Um, Jawbreakers. No. That were cinnamon flavored. Yeah, were they like, I think that's what I, I would think it was. Like firecrackers or like something. <sighs> Fire in the name. Warheads. Remember Not Warheads. warheads. Those I love those things oh, though. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> the wars you would have with them. How long can it last <laughs> yeah, in your yeah. mouth? I don't know. I Let know. me try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As she's looking that up, what do you guys think of the will of Albus Dumbledore? 
very quickly. It's um, lacking. Hmm. Yeah, but he didn't think he was actually going to die, so I feel like he started it. Okay, this oh, is the beginning. Oh, you think he didn't finish the will? Are they going to find more pieces of the will? Ooh, that'd be nice. They're withholding stuff, though, this Ministry of Magic thing. I like how Hermione was like a lawyer yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was crushing it. Yeah. She should go into magical law. You didn't have to do that. Blah, 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 blah. 30 days. Um, Yeah. I like that the snitch thing was pretty great. Mm. And it's interesting it that out of everyone, what? You said it was pretty great. It was? At least that scrimger didn't know. Is that what you're, yeah. you know, you're talking it was about? And that I forgot that he had his mouth caught it yeah. and not his hand. So yeah, that's for a second I was, I was like, like, is that the solution? I'm like, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. But then they got all excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe it is. Womp, womp. I like how um, when... He was telling them about that. He's like, you don't remember my first ever Quidditch catch? I'm sure Ron and Hermione are like, Harry, we don't keep a literal record of every catch that you ever had in Quidditch. <laughs> yeah. Well, you relax. That was good, good though. Was great. What did you think was going to happen when he touched it to his lips? It was going to talk Sorry, to they're literally called fireballs. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, that makes um, a lot of sense. Fireballs. <laughs> Maybe it's the same company. <laughs> what were you saying, Jen? Um, what, what did thought you I was going to talk to him. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Like the, remember in the Tri Wizard Cup thing? With the shell, yeah. the mermaid thing? Yeah. He went underwater. Yep. So I thought. There's going to be Dumbledore's voice in there commanding him to do something or something like that. Or giving him more information, which mm. is what I wanted. And then I was very let down by it being words, but that was not even full sentence or what barely oh, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to me, it does feel like Dumbledore is trying to tell them more than he has currently. They just have to figure it out. Like, yeah, he's like in the a book riddle guy, right? Or with whatever Ron's gonna have to do with his thing or the snitch. He's gonna have to turn off lights. I feel like more will be revealed <laughs> that Dumbledore wants revealed. And it'd be nice if that was more if than just he wrote the horcrux. something where, the, where it closes and you have to turn all the lights off. And he wrote something in the walls somewhere. Yeah, like it's all of them and together, right? And with that book, like whatever. And you, the book is a cipher. You can use the code and like, I don't know. It, it could be a lot of different things like that. Because then we get to hear more from Dumbledore. Huh. But right now maybe, we don't. I mean, this is what he was doing when he was gone all the time. <laughs> just coming up with a really elaborate like thing Will. instead of just telling them. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, goodness, Dumbledore. Um but I think Harry's you know age might I play into it, too. also thought was funny was that I thought it was going to be one of the books that Hermione stole, but they were like, we could not find it. We were <laughs> supposed to get funny. this book. And <laughs> that's what I was waiting for. That'd be great. That'd be so funny. He left you all these books on Horcruxes. Yeah. And Hermione's like, <laughs> whoops. So that would give it away. <laughs> I loved I finally got an explanation. Mm. Yeah, it was satisfying. Wait, what? Which explanation was satisfying? Well, just Horcruxes, oh. like understanding them. Yeah, like it feels like we're making progress, tangible steps. Yeah, yeah. understand fully, that they but... can be destroyed yeah, and what yeah. they're in and how they can jump into people. Yep, I feel like that um, helps inform our uh, yeah. theorizing now. And all this is stuff we're going to bring up in a in a bit. So let's we'll just start and jump into it. Juice. <laughs> Burp up some fireball. Was just <laughs> 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 I was like, do the Very intro. first time <laughs> reader <laughs> fashion. <laughs> <laughs> this is the drinking game. Anytime Kristen burps, oh boy. anytime Jen says ancient magic, anytime Danny mentions blood, <laughs> anytime I say interesting, razor glasses. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not held responsible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Yes. Um, Welcome to the podcast. I'm John. Jen. Danny. And Kristen. And that was Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. Whoa. This is it. Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. That was the that fastest was. we've ever done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny to me how in the beginning of our Harry Potter journey, we were doing five, sometimes even six chapters, and it was taking us like an hour and a half. And now we're on two chapters, and it takes us... Like two, more than two hours. And we're abbreviating the conversation because it is getting late for half these conversations that we have. And we don't want to be there like, I mean, we all kind of want to be there for four hours, but we all have bedtime. We all have work, you know, so I think this is so much fun, though. We're just cranking out some really good conversation about Harry Potter. 
Um, if you can, go give us a rating and review. Again, we are getting shadow banned on all sorts of different platforms on YouTube and on Spotify because they keep flagging our content for copyright, which we're not breaking anything with copyright. So one of the best things that you can do is go give us a rating and review and then go spread the word. Go tell anybody that you know who's a Harry Potter nerd about the podcast so we can kind of keep uh, making content and keep pumping different seasons out. We are planning, we have a uh, second season is coming back pretty soon. Abby is going to start reading and we are um, probably going to record this week. So if you want to watch the live streams, go subscribe to us on YouTube because that's where all the live streams are happening. We are also planning kind of roughly a season three right now. Um, more details about that soon, but that might be going on kind of soon. So I'm pretty excited about that as well. Um, just go do all the other stuff that I always say rating review, go give us go. If you want to email us first time readers at gmail.com, we have an Instagram, we have a Twitter. If you want to support us, you can support us on YouTube by becoming a member, which is incredible. Or you can support us on Patreon, either one. That would be incredible. If you do that, we are starting to incorporate or we're going to incorporate this week member videos. So we're gonna have a conversation about something in Harry Potter or something just nerd-like, and we're gonna record those and we're gonna post those on our channel on YouTube. Um, so they're just like member chats about like nerd stuff, which I'm really excited about. So go you know, support us in any way that you can. Um, we wanna thank you for your support also. You guys have been incredible and it's so fun just even like watching the movies. Last night um, we watched Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix on our YouTube channel and it was just so much fun. We were just hanging out, talking. We like hung out for like an hour after just chatting about the podcast and about different things that we're obsessed with and all that kind of stuff. So it's really fun and you guys make this podcast what it is and you make it really enjoyable and you make um, all of us wanna keep doing this. So thank you so much for your support and enjoy chapters six and seven of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. That's not even going to be funny because you didn't be there. But I wanted oh. to ask Danny, like, how much longer is this in the book? Because I was chapter? reading this afternoon. And he was reading this afternoon. I love the thing. And all of a sudden, he flicks my hand away from it, and the thing, and it closes. And well, because she like, was peeking ahead to see how far I was from the end, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was I writing a note time. on the other side, and then I was like, oh, she's peeking, and I like quick stopped it. Was, it. We, were, we both stopped, and we're hysterically laughing. I'm like, I wish someone caught that on camera. <laughs> That's cute. I thought you were trying to peek ahead, but she claimed she wasn't, so don't worry. We're good. But I now love that I'm you're looking. gatekeeping this so yep. much. Huh. Great. Interesting. Oh, she just took a peek at the next one. She oh, was. come on. Don't do that. She can't even help herself. Why? Yeah. Oh, Jen. That doesn't give me anything. Although, Jen. That's you what you'll say every time until it actually yeah, does. You need to stop looking at memes on Instagram as well. <clears throat> I didn't. That's Whatever I me. sent you, I didn't <laughs> oh watch gosh. the whole thing. It was so funny, though. Oh, my gosh. With the faces, the face mashing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Wait, the one where they're changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like I don't a filter watch. on Instagram where there's people, someone's <laughs> face changes something really funny and someone did it like a Harry Potter scene uh -huh. and uh, all the people's faces were like this and it was like a really serious scene. <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> I great. most of the time don't watch them. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. watch like a just, second you know, and yeah. then I'm like, oh, that doesn't look good and send to John. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Give me a quick summary of chapter six. And Danny, go. <laughs> Maybe chapter six I is just the read this. chapter. Like, oh, you want to do it? I mean, I was going to say I just read it in, like less than an hour ago. I should know. Oh, the ghoul. Um, <laughs> Ron has a ghoul that is looks like him. <laughs> so I oh, nailed it. That You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> For when they go away so that it's his disguise. Right. So that, you know, they're. People are going to go after their families. <sighs> I, words are not happening. <laughs> no, those are good. Those are great words. <laughs> and words, I think they're not really good. It felt like the ghoul was such a small part of the chapter, but it says <laughs> yeah, a big the only theme. thing is you remember, though. Um, <laughs> yeah. But because it, what it showed was... I know. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> what it showed was big because... Then it shows Harry that Ron and Hermione are serious. Yeah. They're dead serious about joining him uh, on this yeah. quest. Oh, oh Hermione. So thing that's when Harry's gosh. like, oh, they're really joining me. They've already made like moves here. Mm. Hermione um, really erased sweet. his her parents. Mm. That's so sad. Which is over the line. But she's but, gonna go back and restore it. And if she doesn't, then they're gonna live happy life. A happy life. And they don't even have to remember Ugh. her or miss her, but that's also weird. I know. Um 
happened. So now we know Horcruxes. <laughs> Everyone take a drink yet. for Kristen's drink. burp. Everyone, um, drinking game. <laughs> oh, no. And um, <laughs> Mrs. Weasley is trying to stop <laughs> them from planning. So mm-hmm. Mrs. Weasley oh, is on guard against the three oh, yeah, uh, making yeah. any plans. And this is all wedding prep stuff still. Wow. We're because she is hoping high. that the less they plan, the more that they'll delay their, their <laughs> leaving. But it doesn't make exactly, yeah. it doesn't really fully make sense. But no, because she's, she's doing wearing herself she out by coming up with yeah. ideas for them to do. I know. She's trying. I know. Poor thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is one of the first lines that we get in the chapter. Ron says, Well, you can't do anything about the Ron mouth the word horcruxes till you're 17. You've got this, you've still got the trace on you. And we can plan here as well, can't we? Or he dropped his voice to a whisper. Do you reckon you already know? The you know where the you know what's are. No, Harry admitted. So where are the Horcruxes? Great Let's question. go over that again real quick. No idea. We thought the sword of Gryffindor, right? Is what you said once. Yeah, you thought the sword of Gryffindor was one. Could it still be one? Is but Dumbledore trying to send it to him? Dumbledore didn't think it was one, right? Mm, no. What is that? And that's why we're, we, that was like a secondary thought of like Dumbledore. If Dumbledore's wrong... The sword would make a good one because the um, Hufflepuff glasses yeah, were a Horcrux, it. right? Is that a chalice? Or we, I'm trying to think, was it confirmed? I don't think so, we, but Dumbledore suspects it. I don't even remember what the list we ran off was. Yeah, it was at the end of the yeah. last book. Don't you have it written down somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> um, It was like the cup, the... Because the journal, locket, the journal, ring, locket, the journal, ring, that's cup, four. Two more. How do you guys remember? <laughs> <laughs> well, Harry killed the journel, right? We're, we assume the locket the didn't have anything more. in it. The locket, we hope the R.I.B. Ring, already took care of. The ring, Dumbledore, the ring Dumbledore destroyed. Dis- destroyed. The cup has to be because that if, was yeah, one of I his first I can't remember if that things. was confirmed or not, but in my head, the it cup is. is a good one. And then we were thinking if it's the cup and the sword... And then, like, two more things that could be... Something um, with Harry's family or something. A Slytherin thing, maybe. Would he do that, though? How would he have time to do that? Something or maybe he family. cut his soul before he killed Harry because he thought it would be easy. Hmm. Yeah, um, that that was one of the interesting questions, too. When he was going to kill Harry, <clears throat> what object did he have that was he was going to make into a horcrux at that moment? Right, right. A crib. <laughs> Harry's crib is a horcrux. <laughs> That's why he's got to go back to Godric's Hollow to destroy that. Something small. And would anyone else know about it? Was it still there? Seems like they're all small items. Did someone else kind find of it? too, like that can be mm. moved. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Where do you think they are located? All over the place. Yeah, <laughs> but places that mean something to him. That is weird. They seem to all be in like significant places i feel like he trusted someone to help deliver them yeah like we had said the journal with lucius i think rb might have helped with the but betrayed him i hope so and then maybe going back to the house would be good because maybe he would find one Mm, yeah It, it certainly seems like a good spot to go but like Hermione said, a little too good. I know. Because be Voldemort would have thought of yeah, that too. Yeah, for sure. He's like definitely planning something. Yeah. He would like know that that's Harry's move and would want would want to corner him there or something like that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring this up in the next chapter too because the Horcrux discussion is I think is a really uh, pertinent one, obviously for the next chapter as well. But there's there's so much going on between what the Horcruxes are, how you destroy them, like really how you destroy them. And then where they are hidden. And this is like what yeah. they're thinking of at the moment. They're trying to figure some of that kind of stuff out. They're trying to figure out their first move. So we'll talk about that next chapter because that's that plays into like how uh, the small discussion they have in that little chapter. Um, but what are what again, give me really quick what you think the Horcruxes are. So we have the ones that we have the diary, right? Yeah, the diary. And the ring. The diary and the ring. So there's two. And then Helga Hufflepuff's chalices. Um, Wait, Helga the, Hufflepuff's chalice. 
Yeah, the the ones that um like the little cups. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then the Slytherin locket, and there's four. I w- wait, what we just said a bunch, and that we're missing one. Oh, the sword of Gryffindor potentially mm-hmm. being one, and then the a Ravenclaw thing. Okay, but we don't know what it would be. Yeah. Um, just because the idea of each of the four founders having an item that is a Horcrux plus the ring and plus the journal. I feel like those would be six that make sense. Mm. Um, but we've never heard of a Ravenclaw thing before. Yeah. And it seems weird that Harry has wielded a Horcrux without even realizing it in the Sword of Gryffindor, if that was one. If that's one. And so we're just kind of stuck like with a couple weird things. And then... What was the significance of the ring again? That was Voldemort's um, parents' ring. Uncle. Or the his, oh, grandpa, his uncle? Grandpa. Grandpa's ring. That was passed down to the son. Hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, but the, but then I, the I also was side. forgetting the locket. Oh, it's a Slytherin the, thing also. Well, I, I said the Slytherin thing, but yeah, then but the what about the locket? And the yeah, locket? Yeah, yeah, the ring they and the locket. Were. But the locket that was the, um, or the necklace that was the Horcrux in the cave wasn't the Slytherin necklace. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it? No, it wasn't because yeah. the Slytherin, Slytherin necklace, necklace was taken by R.A.B. Yeah, it was supposed to be, but it was, it was supposed taken. To be. But then what was the necklace that... Um, it was a different one. That, oh, that was just a different curse necklace yeah. that yeah, got yeah, Katie, Katie Bell, Bell and like all that. Yeah, that, okay, just, yeah. that was something they bought at Borgen and Burks. Yeah. Who's school? Jen with Who the facts right now. Yeah, respect. <laughs> so I feel like... Um, there are a few weird things like that. Um, another thing that was on my radar was the crown thing that signified the cabinet that Harry found in the room of requirement. Um, Dumbledore did mention one other thing that he potentially thought before. He oh, I remember. Uh, Nagini. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's He said he's long been curious about the snake Nagini because he thinks that might be a horcrux too. I don't buy it. That does a living wait, thing. Yeah, but Didn't actually after me. Hermione's thing, it kind of it could make yeah. sense. So that raises another question. If it, like if you, maybe maybe you don't buy it. This is definitely a Dumbledore theory. And we don't know if everything that he thinks is completely true and perfect, but if it's if it could be a living object um like a living thing how does that make any sense that, oh, that it could become like he could make, make a horcrux something alive something living well it how would only make sense if he made the horcrux a physical thing mm-hmm. and then the horcrux jumped into a physical thing uh, into a living mm-hmm. thing because he that's what hermione said so like involuntar- involuntarily it almost jumped into um a it said thing? if you reveal or i forget her wording but something if you emotionally attached. connect enough yeah, yeah, yeah you reveal enough of yourself to the horcrux well that's not no so that's be, something a little bit different because that's Ginny revealed herself but she wasn't going to become a horcrux herself oh uh, and she was going to be consumed by consumed the horcrux. by it, it but not controlled like Voldemort uh, was able to turn into a snake right was yeah it? but so that's uh wait when isn't that how he survived? Oh, um, oh, way back when. But he can't do that now. I don't think he turned into a snake. It literally said that's how he survived by jumping to snakes between oh, he, critters. Well, his soul, or like, yeah, yeah. So that's the end. Uh, that he like. But that's what I'm saying. Didn't become like, a snake. I think he just like uh, like existed. But that's in what I'm snakes. S- well, like coral. And there's yeah. a horcrux right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly for sure. So, so is that how mm. it could could Nagini's horcrux jump to something else? Could the piece inside Nagini be jumping to different things? Is there I another piece that's something interesting? Jump something to else? like Wormtail and like make him do yeah. stuff. That like, would be a decent reason to keep Wormtail around because he seems a little useless in a lot of ways. <laughs> but if he's just an empty vessel to be um, taken over later because he's uh, maybe weak of mind. <laughs> um, but the the Nagini thing doesn't doesn't click. It doesn't feel nice. Feels like a stretch. Like, how could it be a Horcrux? It doesn't match any of the other Horcruxes. But then, what is in he? the way we understand them now? A pet. Yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah. same as Hedwig or Crookshanks or anything else. Like, um, a pretty intelligent, magical critter pet. You know, but there could be more to it. I just don't know how. Because <laughs> hmm. it could be a piece of. I mean, we maybe. have. I think it is actually. We also have like a slightly wild theory. Maybe this is just my theory, but Mrs. Norris is actually like trapped in 
a cat. Yeah. It's an actual woman. Could that be oh, possible? Yeah. The possible case of Nagini. I think Nagini. It's oh, R A B in Nagini. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Um, but <laughs> you nailed it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also thinking um, when Harry saw the vision of Mr. Weasley getting attacked when he was guarding, that was from Nagini's perspective. So there must be a piece of Voldemort in Nagini. Or. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, you got fizzies like, in the nose. Oh yeah, big time. Mm. <laughs> Let's take a sip, and I took a breath in. Mm. Sorry. No, it's all good. But so, Nagini, I mean, I don't know. So yet again, so you, so we know for sure it's the diary, right? That's like a for sure thing. We know that for sure the ring. Well, we, sure I thing. don't know how we know for sure any of it though. Dumbledore yeah, is it's saying it's all conjecture it, on Dumbledore. But like the ring feels, but those, those you know, the diary yeah, feel to it, big time. Yeah. So we like we'll say for sure those two things, and then you're saying the locket that was in the cave that isn't the real locket, but there's a real locket out there, possibly destroyed, possibly not. We're not, yeah. we're not sure yet. Uh, already, Could, we just what find about out Harry here. Potter? Could he be like? Well, like in his scar or something. Yeah. No, but <laughs> could Harry Potter be a war crime? I just don't like that. The the scar <laughs> burning, the connection, the something. Because the connection, I don't know. Interesting. It, it He's just his feels own like person, how, though. though. I don't know. I'm just throwing out weird. Things. I know it's. I'm just trying. I'm spreading it large so that way I can be <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cast We're the coming up with it. absurd <laughs> theories just so we can cast in that large enough to maybe get on it. <laughs> catch some kind of track. <laughs> I just think um, when we're saying things like the journal or the locket or the ring, those make a lot of sense. They feel like important they're objects well yeah they're things you could destroy because it's different to say destroy rather than kill like you're trying to destroy the object so well that's maybe fair because if it's alive it could die so easier than being destroyed mm, like it's an object that has to like it can't die on its own kind of thing so even on to that so that there's another interesting point in that if could Ginny potentially be a Horcrux along with that line of reasoning? Because was she at the point of being like having the soul of Voldemort inside her or no? I feel like it was on. It could have been. It felt like she was being controlled by it, but yeah. we didn't, we didn't ever get a true. Wait, is that what Quirrell was then? Uh, Quirrell is weird. Quirrell is like a, he, it, an that's like an anomaly. Like he, yeah, like he was a, a host for a parasite essentially. That's disgusting. I know. It's, so, yeah. it's gross. Yeah. It, it really is gross. But like if he wasn't, we wouldn't be here. I know. <laughs> <sighs> I know. Um, but he would have found some other weak body to take over. He would have found something. It just doesn't. I still don't understand how he's alive. It like doesn't make sense. <laughs> we'll go. Like, I hope it ties nicely at the end of this book. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Oh, great. We're going to have to go to the play to get the answer. <laughs> what the? <laughs> she just thought of everything and she keeps just laying it out for them. For them. Um, let's pivot because I want to I want to come back to the Horcrux discussion in the next chapter. But uh, do you kind of find it shocking that Mrs. You Weasley started. still wants to send the kids to Hogwarts? Like she's still expecting the kids to go to Hogwarts. Would you think that Hogwarts would still be a viable place for your kids? Ugh. like dumbledore is gone but like it's... what are they learning for i feel like it's like war right yeah i don't know it does feel weird like i think also i mean it's like a mom just wanting things to go back to normal right i was gonna say that's her comfort yeah mm. that's the routine that's what's supposed to happen so mm. it's like just the denial to, yeah yeah just go back to hogwarts yeah it's just like the routine i guess yeah what you said so it's but weird it's, though because uh, like the your teachers going back yeah what teachers are you are gonna go back mcgonagall would have to i would think okay Wouldn't she be in charge who's gonna be the new headmaster is, is mcgonagall gonna be the new headmaster headmistress i would think so <clears throat> wasn't mm. it chosen isn't it chosen? by the governors and well, by the ministry kind of are. Yeah, we don't know much about the governors. They haven't been mentioned much. Um, but everything should be on hold right now. 
Like this year should just be like freeze. <laughs> yeah. It's a COVID year. Oh, I just thought that. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I should say it. <laughs> say it for me. <laughs> Could anyone else be uh, the headmaster? Trelawney. <laughs> Yikes. How great of a book would that be? Oh my gosh. That movie would be the so fact good. That you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> With Thompson over there. Um but yeah, Mrs. Weasley is interesting when she's when she's expecting them to go back to Hogwarts. And there's all sorts of funny little dialogue that happened in this chapter too. Like one of my favorite little tidbits is now, Ron, have you cleaned your room yet? <laughs> Why? exclaimed Ron, slamming a spoon down and glaring at his mother. Why does my room have to be cleaned out? Harry and I are fine with the way it is. We are holding your brother's wedding here in a few days' time, young man. And are they getting married in my bedroom? Asked Ron furiously. I love that part. No. That was good. So why in the name of Merlin Saggy left? <laughs> Don't talk to oh, your yeah, mother that like that, said Mrs. Weasley firmly. And do as you're told. <laughs> That's such I a great love line. That second. Again, she is so good at bringing levity to like really dark situations because mm-hmm. this book would be so dark and depressing otherwise. And like, there's so many funny little moments in there. <laughs> I love that. That's <laughs> good. Um, then they have a conjecture about whether Moody is alive or not. Are we kind of confirming that he's? We think he's dead or no? Again, you you it said before, Danny. It seems like it, but there's yeah. no evidence. Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no body, so we're not really sure. And there was a lot going on, so they're like, did Bill really see it? Or was it just chaotic and he right. fell? But even if he fell, it's a thousand feet off the ground. But he could have done a shield charm. But what I do know is she gets tricky with this writing. She might find a way. You know, like, we don't want to, unless we know she for sure tricky. someone's gone, we, uh, yeah. We like having that little hope. Is it possible that um, the Death Eaters captured him and are maybe like holding him captive, torturing him or something like that? Because they, if they can't find a body, is it possible that that happened? Oh, or is boy. Moody maybe just on the run? I or would think he dead? he'd be possible. on the run or dead, not captured. Yeah. I feel like he's too powerful for that. <laughs> you say anything is possible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. I feel like he would apparate though, but I don't know how much effort apparating yeah. takes. Um, and then he would survive. But if he does show up, what first order of business is be? drill him with questions. Oh, because yeah. Because polyjuice sure. up the yeah. wazoo. Um, <laughs> yep. When you apparate. So I don't know. Oh, the pop. Yeah, the pop. The pop. He's got a big butt. I'm wondering what it would be like. <laughs> what does a naked uh, Harry Potter apparate uh, sound sound like <laughs> on a horse? <laughs> 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 well, that was a mental image. <laughs> wow. Um, I thought so you were going to say Mad Eye Moody. I was like, I don't <laughs> want to think of <laughs> that <laughs> one. <laughs> woof. <laughs> Your um, girlfriend, woof. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> 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 so mad eye has a whole stock of polyjuice and it's only missing one ingredient the person's dna yeah right that's weird i didn't know that's how polyjuice was i thought it had to be brewed with the person's oh, dna ingredient it's so recipe. it's kind of cool yeah. Yeah. that they've got now a whole bunch of it yeah. ready to turn into anyone yeah. um hmm. how do you think they're gonna use that i don't know but uh when scrimdrawer was there they should have grabbed a hair Mm. being the minister of magic is not maybe they did maybe hermione did she's yeah. smart she is smart. So smart or they said they were no said no it was maybe harry like Ooh, you know grabs, grabs a little something a little nose hair. Hair. or there's a hair <laughs> there's like a little <laughs> hair in afterwards. the book <laughs> on the thing <laughs> but i'm trying to think of who else anyone else like i feel like it would be great if they could get a death eaters hair mm. i'm trying to think if there was any crossover with any of these people that they could uh get hair honestly Snape's hair might not be bad. Mm. That's so greasy it all clings Ugh. together. <laughs> but you go do it through yeah. his yeah, office right and right like try and find one, maybe. Maybe that's why he keeps it greasy. So he, no one can do a potion <laughs> with his hair. Ooh. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> right. <laughs> a little gross, but well, like we were talking about in the last book, like you would have to actually manage your um your body well. It, like Dumbledore, like we joked about clipping the toenails, you make sure you don't lose any of them. Because if your hair is a way someone could pre- pretend to be you, you're only getting your hair cut from trusted people. And you probably do it yourself. And you want to make <laughs> yeah. sure all those hairs are gone. Yep. So I bet everyone takes it pretty seriously. I don't think he cuts his hair. Dumbledore just lets it grow? Oh, I meant Snape. Oh, Snape. Yeah. I mm. mean, 
He magically cuts it and then burns it or something like that. Well, we know mm. Charlie got a haircut, mm-hmm. but what good is it to be Charlie? <laughs> no oh, offense to Charlie. Charlie. He's nice. I like him. But uh, <laughs> You can wrangle dragons. If yeah, unless they want to go out thing. to Romania and get some dragons. And they find out Norbert is really Norberta. Norberta? Oh my gosh, Norberta. <laughs> yeah, that was cute. <laughs> that was great. Um, and they, how do you know? <laughs> I know. Yeah. They're, they're more aggressive. <laughs> they're a little more crazy. Hmm. Um, <laughs> this is another line. Moving on. <laughs> That's <laughs> offensive that. to us. Well, and, they refer, and he <laughs> talked Sorry, to Mrs. Weasley there. like right after he said that. He talked about his mom right after. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is another line. Uh, what are you doing with all those books anyway? Ron asked, limping back to his bed. Just trying to decide which ones to take with us, said Hermione. When we're looking for horcruxes. Oh, of course, said Ron, clapping his hand to his forehead. I forgot we'll be hunting down Voldemort in a mobile library. Ha ha, said Hermione, <laughs> looking down the sp- at Spellman's syllabary. I wonder, will we need to translate runes? It's possible. I, th- I think we better take it to be safe. So, more personal question. If you were hunting Lord Voldemort and you had to take five objects with you, just five, from everything that may be personal objects in your life, your own life, and then on top of that, things that you've seen in the wizarding world currently, what five objects would you take? Oh, this requires a lot of things. <laughs> 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 I mean, you have, I'll, I'll give you some lists of things. You have the map, you have... Um, the invisibility cloak. Yeah, you have oh, to yeah. So, that's okay, great. so that's, yeah. let's, let's com- collectively a, come up yeah. with that. Invisibility cloak. Is I like the sneak scope that he got. Yeah, I thought that Hermione was really gave him a sneak scope. That was good for her birthday. Yeah, and then I feel no. like you. No, I think I think so. I just haven't seen it work. Ah, but maybe it did. It did. It yeah, was it working was on, on overtime. On Barty Crouch Jr. Yeah, they just didn't trust it. They need to get Snape's journal on potions. Ooh, advanced potion. That making. that would be. A and it has good one. all. Where the is side. that right now? It's in Hogwarts in the. Oh room of yeah. requirement hidden mm-hmm. that's where harry stashed it yeah. the one that has the crown on the top he should go get it <laughs> you're so obsessed about this crown it just feels like a thing that could be a thing i think well that's the thing too jewels are important <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i think that could be a thing yep um well only because i think there's a certain significance to things that muggles would think are significant yeah okay so you know um <laughs> swords and chalices and uh so we have three items so far. <clears throat> and would we bring those? Why does Harry bring the Marauder's Map? It's a little silly. Yeah, um, you're not going to be at Hogwarts. That's a little weird one, but... What about the dark s- magic spell book that Hermione got? Wouldn't that be good? I mean, well, yeah, all her books that she... Yeah, yeah. she's got some good So, books. like, books should be, like, one thing. Yeah, we'll say all the books that we have are collectively <laughs> one thing. Yep. Yeah, I like that. So that's four things we, we got said? four. So Maybe the broom, but if it's all three of them... Uh, can they do a magic carpet and travel together? Like Harry doesn't have his broom anymore. I can show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like they need a way of traveling all of them, either apparating. like a big thestral or apparating. They're just going to apparate. Right. I feel so like we haven't seen sense? them do it well though. Know. Hermione, we? well, not necessarily, but it's like driving when you're 18. It's like you know, or they're 17. Um, I think you, you kind of just pick it up and you're just good at and it. And you're good at it. Okay, you don't, there's not a huge learning not, curve. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want anyone getting splinched. I'm, I mean, yeah, exactly. I feel like that is a learning curve. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> but guess. if you're going with it's Hermione, not really. they, it's not painful they, could do, curve. they could just do side along apparition with Hermione. Yeah, you're we right. We know Hermione right. is good at apparition, probably. And then they'd all end up in the same place, yeah. which is good. Okay. Um, so we're bringing a sneaky scope, invisibility cloak, um, books. What was the other thing? What did I say? Oh, the Snape's journal. Oh, yeah. Advanced push. Book. Well, l- lug that into books. So oh. give mm. us two more. Well, now I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I want this mirror to mean more than it actually does. Um, That's true. Currently, we, it could just be a way Dumbledore of checking out your hair. It, so. But yeah, the mirror does seem good in, in the way it's being written about now. But Polyjuice potion, done. Five. The, oh, the polyjuice is a really good thing. Mm. But yeah, like, I'm saying great. not the mirror because currently it's just that a mirror. That was five. <laughs> but if it wasn't for her clever writing, we would still, it would be just a broken mirror. There's got to be more. Like, what else helps okay. you fight evil? What or about, like, does he still have that luck potion? Liquid luck, yeah. yeah. Half of a liquid luck. No, he doesn't he have gave any it to them. He gave it, yeah, they, they oh, yeah, they had it, to use unfortunately. it. Um, but that it maybe saved idea. their lives. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that's, 
I'm trying to think of what the Weasleys might have around. Let's let's do this. Let's lump all of the Voldemort or Voldemort Dumbledore objects that he gave them in his will. Let's lump those into one. The will of Albus mm. Dumbledore. Let's take that because there's the things in there I want to discuss when we get to that chapter. But what the heck? Why the heck did uh, Dumbledore leave Hermione this book, Ron the Deluminator, and Harry the Snitch? It's a riddle. Yeah. Like, what are they trying Ooh, to nice. figure out? So we'll try to figure that out. Yeah, we will. We're going to yeah. get it. This time on Harry Potter and the first time readers. Um, first time readers is going to get it the first time. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I love the moment, too, when Harry realizes how serious they are. She goes, listen, said Harry, or said Harry. He sat straight up. Ron and Hermione looked at him with a similar mixture of resignation and defiance. I know you said after Dumbledore's funeral that you wanted to come with me, Harry began. Here he goes, Ron said to Hermione, rolling his eyes. As we knew he would, she sighed, turning back to the books. You know, I think I will take Hogwarts to history, even if we're not going back there. I don't think I'd feel right if I didn't have it with. Listen, said Harry again. No, Harry, you listen, said Hermione. We're coming with you, and that was decided months ago. Years, really. But shut up, Ron advised him. And then they talk about their plans after that when, when Hermione modifies her parents' memory and Ron talks about the, the ghoul in pajamas. Um, I love I love their dedication. I love uh, Hermione and Ron's dedication to him. But how do you think they will fare in this hunt for Horcruxes, all three of them together? They have to stick together. Mm. I feel like they'll be a good team. They, they balance each other out really well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What does Ron bring to the table? He's good at chess. <laughs> yeah. A wizard's chess. Very good at wizard's chess. Humor. He's, he's, I feel like uh, he's trying to bring, yeah, a little bit of humor. He's even right now like overcompensating. Maybe he realizes he might be the weak link. So he's like being very optimistic about things. Mm. He even had that moment of um, uh, like really hoping that Moody was still alive and the rest of them are like, I don't really think this is reasonable, Ron. So Ron is going to bring his optimism maybe. Mm. Um, a vibe. A vibe, yeah. Ron brings a vibe. He's a vibe. Mm-hmm. What would what would you think? How would their partnership be with just Harry and Hermione? Two, they would, yeah. It'd be no, dry. It would not be. Yeah. Good. It'd be very intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like, so he has to go. Yeah, he's got to go. Mm-hmm. He balances them out well. Yeah. Hmm. But they also wouldn't get very far without Hermione. Hmm. So, yeah. yeah. What uh? So and they they talk about they want to go to Godric's Hollow or Harry really wants to go there. What answers are gonna lie in Godric's Hollow for Harry, if any? Like what is what is there that he's seeking besides his parents' grave? Blood bones. I was like, what, what are you gonna say? I'll say blood. blood. You say ancient magic. Drink. One, two, three. <laughs> Harry might have a flashback. Um, yeah if he touches like something it might like give him a flashback or something. i mean maybe actually touching things i was just thinking like the the being there um the energy of the place or i don't even know or maybe it'd be like a connection with voldemort since they were both there there's there's got to be some ancient magic some kind of energy something about it but let's assume none of that is there and it's just a place then I don't see what they could gain from it. But is it some empty clues about or his someone parents, else maybe? lives there? Or? Yeah, right, right. Is it like a normal home that someone else bought and they're like, oh, what are you doing <laughs> yeah. here, dude? Um, or is it exactly how it was left all those years ago, mm. 17, 16 years ago? Um, what could be there? What could possibly be there that would yeah. help at all? Um, and because it seems to be a known spot, wouldn't it already have been picked through by other people who know about it Mm. or if this whole moment was such a big deal is it like a museum a wizard museum a plaque outside this is where the boy harry potter defeated voldemort or sent him away or destroyed him or whatever um so maybe it's like a place other wizards could go visit and check out Mm. and be like whoa this is the crazy spot where everything happened um so if that's the case maybe harry could learn a few things about like where he came from yeah do you think there's a horcrux in godric's hollow only if Voldemort brought one there for Harry, but why wouldn't he he have gone to pick it up already? Mm, yep. Um, so I don't think there would be. And this is where they get in a long discussion. Not long, but they talk about Horcruxes for a second here. And this is one of the lines. Um, and the more I've read about them, Sir Hermione, the more horrible they seem. 
and the less I can believe he actually made six. It warns in this book how unstable um, you make the rest of your soul by ripping it. And that's just by making one Horcrux. Harry remembered what Dumbledore had said about Voldemort moving beyond the usual evil. Isn't there any way of putting yourself back together? Ron asked. Yes, said Hermione with a hollow smile, but it would be excruciatingly painful. Why? How do you do it? Added Harry. Remorse, said Hermione. You've got to really feel what you've done. There's a footnote. Apparently the pain of it can destroy you. I can't see Voldemort attempting it. Can you? Do you ever think that he would experience remorse for what he's done? <laughs> it's laughable, right? No, I can't picture it at all. Yeah. If he really misunderstood remorse and wanted to put a piece of him back inside to like create a new Horcrux or something, he's like, oh, let me like pull a piece back and then I'll create another Horcrux. Mm. Then I don't even think he could fake remorse. Yeah. And and if you wanted to get remorse enough to make yourself whole again, would it be even be true yeah. remorse? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, so no, I just cannot picture it. Nothing about him seems to be even capable of remorse. So those yeah. they're gonna be out there. We're we're pretty sure that Voldemort isn't gonna have remorse over what he's done. Yeah. So Hermione says it has to be something so destructive that the Horcrux can't repair itself. Basilisk venom only has one antidote, and it's incredibly rare. But what is the antidote? They didn't even say. Phoenix tears. Oh, they did say. Yeah, literally the only thing that yeah that that uh saved Harry. He just got yeah, and, and he, he just happened to get right the only door, antidote. Yeah. Um, and where is that fang? Ron made a joke about like when there's tons of those around. Great. But that feels like the one thing they should carry around then. The fang. But it maybe it only had enough of the venom in it because it just broke yeah. off the basilisk. So is that whatever how... they bring with them, it has to be something to kill the horcruxes. Yeah. So maybe that's step one. Like you could find a horcrux, sure, but if you don't have a way of destroying it, what good is it? You should probably figure out how to destroy it first and then bring that thing wherever mm. you go. Um so do you what object do you think? Do you think they're going to come across a basilisk, basilisk, uh, fang? Like what? Uh, what are the things? Hermione says some, it has to be something so destructive that it can't repair itself. Have we seen anything in the wizarding world that has been so destructive, like a basilisk, fang? Are there other magical things that are destructive or destroy themselves? Or I don't, I don't think so. Mm, it would again it would be good writing it would be nice if it if it is something we have seen before but just didn't think to apply it that way mm. um but what and oh the only thing we thought of was the cabinet that makes things disappear yeah but then we found out later it didn't even yep so is there anything else that just like gone forever a mount doom so because mm. that's part of the problem they're they might be able to go search for these things, but how are they going to destroy them? Did Dumbledore leave them any clues for how to destroy them? And how did how did Dumbledore destroy the ring? I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. It was something yeah, crazy, say- though, because Snape had to like revive him, mm. which is also crazy. No, I don't get this whole thing. Why would he just be like, ha ha? I'm not going to help you. <laughs> yeah. That's a great, great question. When he was waiting for the right moment. But if Dumbledore, I just don't, I can't see this working because if Dumbledore died, well, basically twice. Yeah. The ring and the locket. How the heck is Harry supposed to? And what was Dumbledore's plan? Or the what? I don't know. The locket? Yeah, like maybe it, the sword has power and it can slice it or something. Hmm. Did kill the basilisk. The Gryffindor sword. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That actually makes the most sense because Dumbledore wanted them to have it, and if it it is magical mm-hmm. and it's a weapon, it killed a basilisk. So maybe it also could destroy these other things. Hmm. But then why didn't Dumbledore try that the first time? Yeah, because he had or like bring yeah. it with him. To go get the locket. Hmm. I don't know. Are there other magical objects that destroy? 
You set I'm it down sure. in front of the Whomping Willow, and the Whomping Willow just whomps <laughs> on it. For what a about while. Fox? Could the Phoenix do something? Yeah, but Phoenix, the Phoenix is gone. I know, but like not actually gone. You, oh, you Drink. don't think so? <laughs> Drink. Oh yeah. Drink. Good interesting. call. Very interesting. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I, I missed that. I forgot that. What one. would happen if so? Basilisk venom destroys a horcrux what would happen if fox cried a tear on a horcrux would it heal itself burn it oh that'd be interesting would it force voldemort to Mm. feel remorse dang or reverse whoa that'd be intense well do you think fox is going to come back in the story at all yes i kind of don't think so why Mm. the wands have a connection to fox so mm, Fox is true. always here. It's true. Well, no, I just didn't think so because it, it felt kind of final. Like the Fox was so connected. That Fox was so connected to Dumbledore um, that when Dumbledore died, it almost gave me the idea that Fox was flying off to die as well. Because otherwise the Phoenix would never die, right? It just always is reborn. So something about it just felt like... That seemed like a waste. Of Fox it. bonded with Dumbledore and that was it. Yeah. But then Harry too... But then why isn't Fox here right now? Or yeah. maybe Fox is flying high. He needs to go high, away. Maybe like, he you, knows. Yeah. Do you think that Fox could destroy a Horcrux? Do you think that uh, another creature that we know is no? You think like a Dementor could destroy it? Do I don't you, think a Dementor could because it's so like feelings yeah. based. And according to this, you have to destroy the container. But what it's if an enchanted body? But a, a could Phoenix a Phoenix do it if what a Phoenix a is getting destroyed by fire and being reborn? Or but it even even with the, the Dementor, horcrux? what about a Dementor's kiss? What does it do? It sucks its soul out. Well. So could sucks that the soul potentially mm-hmm. work with the Horcrux, and then become a Dementor though? Like it feels like it's in the same realm. Yeah. But it almost feels more powerful than a Dementor in terms of its evilness, and because it's made by splitting a soul, I feel like a Dementor wouldn't even be attracted to it. It's mm-hmm. it's a broken piece of a soul. Yeah, and it's made by so much like hatred and evil to kill that i feel like the dementors are feeding on happy memories not uh demented what about memories the of ministry murder. of magic the floor where there was all those things that they went through the kids like yeah anything in there that's a good the thought. archway oh you throw oh, yeah. it through the archway yeah that's what i was thinking hmm. if sirius went through the archway and he died maybe but it's an object but it's also a soul that's a really good idea chuck it through the archway and it's dead forever Maybe. Maybe. There's got to be something else. There were other things there, though. Okay. Yeah, there were the, um, the brain things. Have any of the trio used a, a unforgivable curse? Mm, no. Harry tried. He tried and it didn't work. He tried to use Crucio on Bellatrix. <laughs> do you think that Avada Kedavra could work on a Horcrux? And do you think that any of the trio would actually use Avada Kedavra ever? I feel like they could say it, but I don't know if it would actually work. Mm. I think they would. Only to save one of the other ones. (laughs) Mm. Because Harry didn't already. He had chances. And he's trying to use Expelliarmus. So (laughs) he clearly is uh, having trouble. But I think he would by the end if things got that dire and he needed to save his friends. Um, But I don't think it would work on a Horcrux. Because it doesn't kill a container. So it feels, again, like it's this, you need like a what magical was, thing. What was the unicorn blood again? It was like, it give, it lets you yeah. live longer, but creature. there was a curse with it too. Yeah, if you drink its blood, to kill something so pure, um, it gives you a curse life. If you drink its blood, it'll keep you alive, even if you're on the edge of death. But it costs you, like, you're, you're going to live a half-life because of it. So he dropping, drank so much of it. Yeah. A lot of half lives. He's like a one. Only because Haggard said something about life. unicorns. Like he's like, I got more unicorns baby or something. Unicorns. Yeah. Yep. Baby so unicorns. That made me right think on. of something. And you remember what color baby unicorns are? Brown. Your, your, gold. Your gold. Yeah. Nice. They're gold. And then they go silver, and then they go white. Mm, Pretty cute. That must be cute. Can you stab <laughs> things with a unicorn horn? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a basilisk fang, right? except magical good maybe instead they're of magical on your bad. side though right i was just thinking all the creatures of hagrid and all of them they like battle with voldemort mm. does the aragog unicorn, have venom the 
he did because what's his name took yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. So where <laughs> is that? Acromantial venom is oh. exceptionally rare. Could that also have um, Horcrux killing power? Ooh. Wait, who took it again? Slughorn. Yeah. Slughorn. I couldn't. He I sold don't it on the black market. <laughs> so interesting. They could go to the black market and look for things like that. <laughs> yeah. But maybe Borgen and Burks would have something else, or maybe Basilisk Fangs can also be purchased. What about like price. dark magic on a dark object? But like, like what Snape's, magic? Snape's um, slicing thing. Ooh, Sectum Sempra on a on it. Yeah. I wonder. It's worth a try. Yeah. Because he needed dark magic to heal it. It still doesn't feel quite right. But I feel like whenever they find a Horcrux, try all their magic. I also think that he probably has something written in the journal. What about a potion? They can make potions like brew a thing. Yeah, yeah. And like stir it in. But like, but what potion though? Well, it would be Love in Snape's potion. journal. <laughs> oh my god! Slughorn says it's the most to dangerous potion in the room. Out yeah, right. The, uh, the killing. You got to put a put, throw a little. Oh love yeah, in that there. was the whole thing with the mom. My theory with the uh, Voldemort's mom and the love like potion. Song. Yeah, backfired <laughs> yeah. on her. Um, it also it says the bit of the soul inside it can flit in and out of someone if they get too close to the yeah. object, and I don't mean holding it for too long. Um, nothing to do with touching it, but emotionally close. So it does still feel like there's a chance of um, a Horcrux already having a victim, so to speak. Like, is it possible that a Horcrux has already been close to somebody enough that emotionally that someone might be uh, under influence like from is, a Horcrux without realizing it? Is R.A.B. If he's been hanging on to this thing, this locket. Yeah accidentally getting emotionally close to it um warm tail what would his i don't know he's just a pain (laughs) yeah we just hate him we just don't like warm tail he has like one of those robotic arms now too out of so do you think so if they find a horcrux do you think that one of them would like all of them maybe would become possessed by this horcrux at all i don't think so but they're not able to destroy it. They don't know what is so what right. If, if right. they're holding on to a Horcrux for a while, do you think that they would be more susceptible to something like that? Yeah, potentially. But I think Hermione is smart and she's the one reading this and she says, I mean close emotionally. Ginny poured her heart yeah. out into that yeah. diary and made herself incredibly vulnerable. Um, you're in trouble if you get too fond of or dependent on the Horcrux. Fond of. Wow, that's weird. Yeah. Fond of, because that, again, like Lord of the Rings references, but yeah, yeah, it's like becoming fond of a thing that has value. (laughs) And maybe, (laughs) maybe that was part of um, Voldemort's plan, actually, because he picked objects that people would naturally be fond of. Like, they're objects that already have like magical and muggle appeal. So it is very possible that someone would become fond of a Horcrux without realizing that they were opening up uh, themselves mm. to some kind of emotional vulnerability. Yeah. So it's interesting, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of the Horcruxes already had a little little victim involved. Mm. I'm not understanding, though, is that it's saying it's really hard for them to put back their soul together. They would yeah. need remorse. So it sounds like, to me, all you have to do is kill Voldemort and his being now, and he would not be able to put together his soul is to create another whole self of him. No. But he would still be six parts or yeah. however many parts are left. So those six parts would have to make one whole. So even right now, mm-hmm. Voldemort in his person isn't whole. He's a sixth of himself or a seventh of himself or a fifth or however many horcruxes so, there but are. But tell me, all right, so we kill Voldemort in his being right now. Yeah. In theory, with all the stuff we have, what happens to him? He would, the same thing that happened to him when he was just when Harry, when the killing curse rebounded off of that, he would, his, oh, he goes like a back part to of nothing. his soul, yeah, like another, whoever has these objects could like reawaken, like like the Malfoys had the diary. They didn't. I guess they didn't necessarily know necessarily what it was, but Voldemort could possess that diary and then re return again, because. Um. He is in he there is a part of him in that. So he can no one knows about these horcruxes though. 
Yeah, no one knows. Which is probably why Dumbledore didn't want anyone to know either. Because it could be the same thing. Maybe this time he doesn't get so lucky. Yeah. Find a host. Yeah. Yeah. So then even if they could destroy him, they could then hunt down his Horcruxes in secret for a while. And none of his followers would know that he's still alive. I feel like that's a better route. Let's <laughs> kill him now instead of hunting the Horcruxes. And but, yeah, but they don't know that yeah. it would even work, though. And so they get to weaken him by doing the Horcruxes, it seems. The thing is, doesn't he feel that? And he... Ooh, that's a great question. Why wouldn't know. he feel that? It didn't feel like he, there was a connection with the diary. The diary felt like a, its own separate but thing. But he wasn't really a person yet. Mm. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I guess we have to just wonder, like, how separate are these pieces of his soul? Are they connected like Harry and Voldemort are connected? Because Harry knows when Voldemort's angry. So is it that same connection? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's his actual pieces? soul. It's not just a piece of him. Yeah, maybe. So then they're going to, I feel like he'd be more angry with them or know where they are. I don't know. It doesn't seem like they have enough information to be doing this stuff. Mm. Um, the uh, the Horcruxes are they're like they like tether his soul to this earth. So in his being right now, he's not necessarily whole again again because he's split, but he still has power. But these other things keep him. They give him the ability to still rise again. They're like little mm. anchor points, like almost like respawn yeah. That makes points, sense. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Maybe that's like a better way of thinking about it. than. But like, it took him forever to do it once. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know. That's my own. But he was thought. also still figuring it out. Yeah. Um, and, and I think. be faster. Either. And now how many people have actually come back? You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's now figured out more than anyone else. He had already gone, according to him, farther along the path to immortality. <laughs> yep. So now it feels like he put in more of these anchor points potentially or just understands them a little better. You think and he, he has knew more his than path, seven now? I don't think, because I think he loves the magical number oh, yeah, of seven, seven parts. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it's more, but he still might not know that it was split. Or maybe he kept distance from his own anchor points, his own horcruxes, because it might accidentally give away where they are. Yeah. And he wants to keep them a secret. So he purposefully is keeping like a distance. Um, but I don't know. Because I don't know how this whole tracking thing works. Like Harry, he's young and he was being tracked. Um, so then is there any part of that that like Voldemort knows certain things are trackable so he has to keep distance from pieces of himself? Um, I don't know. But yeah, it feels weird and kind of wild that they don't know how to destroy them. Yeah, like how did, again, how did uh, Dumbledore destroy this ring? He was in the house, right? Maybe there was something in the house. But it wasn't destroyed in the house though. I thought it was. No, we don't know where he went. He could have stayed um, in the house. It could have been something else. He could I have just tried like casting ex- spells like on it, it. Like exploded the house. I think that was uh, the protection that was surrounding the ring, but I don't uh, think it was the ring itself. Okay. I don't know, but Harry should ask. <laughs> I know <laughs> that's the running gag of this. Is like, why didn't Harry ask him? But the thing is, Any he did questions. try. But Dumbledore kept saying it later. Yeah, it's true. So it's not yeah, really Harry's fault. Yeah. Because Harry was even literally asking, what's the deal with your hand? He's like, yeah. not And that now. right there might have told the story. Yeah. And I been know. like, oh, well, this is what it is. I tried to destroy the Horcrux by doing this. It worked. Try it I later. Know. Or it didn't work. Here's what I'll do next time. It's a great point. But it's a great point. Dumbledore wasn't ready. Or maybe Harry wasn't ready. Oh, J.K. Rowling didn't want us to know. <laughs> That's what noise. Are there me. enough She's little context clues in there that we should know? Um, let's go on to the that will of Albus Dumbledore, chapter chapter clue. seven. Give me a quick summary of this one. Oh, you know what's interesting before we move <laughs> on? <laughs> Sorry, Jim, I know you have bedtime. Um, when Floor's mom comes in, she glided forward, stooped to kiss Mrs. Weasley, and then she says, Ashante, but it's in italics. And I thought, is that a spell? <laughs> Did she just do a spell on Mrs. Ooh. Weasley to be charming? A little Vila spell? And we think of actually. it as just being French, but um, it does feel funny because it's written in italics in the same look of all spells. I thought, I wonder if she just did a little, you're going to like me spell. Um, <laughs> you are enchanted by me. Because, yeah, she kind of liked her after that. Didn't, I'm sure she probably would, had mixed feelings before it, but... 
So yeah. Anyways, so um, are we watching out for Miss Stella Core over here? Is she like a little temptress? <laughs> it does seem that it. way, at least slightly. She uh, <laughs> uses it to her advantage. Um, I was cautious about those tent setting up people because they were <laughs> yeah. letting in strangers, um, but nothing came of it. Even though I'm still cautious about it because they were strangers and why'd they let them in? Um, and they named them Milliments Magic Marquees. Don't be bringing marquees in here. You just set up your own marquee. You don't bring in Milliment. We don't know anything about Milliment. Um, anyways. Dude, all right. Me and you need to have a side podcast. Oh, we'll just do this online. Excuse me. And no, this is we'll do all the details. It'll be a 14 hour long podcast of me and <laughs> yeah. Danny just going word by word in yeah, this book. Yeah, so stinking slow. All right, sorry, Jen. Now, yeah, I don't uh, want to be a part yeah. of that one. Yeah. Yep. I'm you guys can you guys have it. <laughs> all right. And then I'll tell you about the Lord of the Rings every five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Remember that scene? <clears throat> all right, Danny, go. Oh, yeah, the summary. What happened in this chapter? So this chapter is uh, where the will of Dumbledore is read by Scrimgeour to the three. Um, And that's mid-chapter, but it's Harry's birthday today. So friends come uh, like Hagrid, Lupin, and Tonks. Uh, Mr. Weasley ends up bringing Scrimgeour last minute because he's going to do the will reading. Um, What was his um, Patronus? A hedgehog or something? A weasel. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> come on, Jen. Um, oh, for Weasley, how cute! Yeah, yep. it's so cute. Um, yeah. So then, There's by the end of this more. chapter, the second half of the chapter is pretty much just wondering what they're going to do with the snitch, the put outer, and the tales of Beetle the Bard that they received from Dumbledore and his will. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I'm saying put outer, but the chapter never calls it that. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like she regretted calling it something yeah, so yeah, simple. Yeah. Most and people it, say that, yeah. It is funny that that was one of the first things we like made fun of lightly at yeah. the beginning of the first book. We're like, ah, oh, you know, the, I think I said outer. the naming committee could do a little extra work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's um, right. yep. So it was funny that they came up with a better name for it. Um, Wait, what is it called now? A Deluminator. Deluminator. Uh, cool name. Yeah, cool name. I still wouldn't have minded a little throwback to put out or at least yeah. until like it's yeah. casual street name. But yeah. if there's only one of them. That's what they're slinging these days, huh? That's what they're slinging. So, yeah, I mean, that's this chapter. It's a... (laughs) It's an action-packed chapter. It's kind of meaty, yeah. Yeah. It it was cool. Maybe not action-packed, yeah. Oh, you forgot the hot tamale scene. Ooh, with Ginny and Harry. Oh, man, Harry and Ginny. Things got spicy. I know, Ron's spoiling the mood right there. Come on, Ron. (laughs) But honestly, it was pretty noble when Ron interrupted. But at first, I was like, dude, what the... (laughs) Chill. (laughs) Um, Ginny's like... Here's your birthday present. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Something you'll remember me. Yeah. Um, oh, and the chapter started with yeah, Harry this... having a little dream vision Valdi yeah. connection, um, which was kind of huge. He was walking along a mountain road in, a, in the cool blue light of dawn. Far below, swathed in mist, was a shadow of a small town. It was the man he sought down there. The man he needed so badly he could think of little else. The man who held the answer. The answer to his problem? What's going on? The wand problem. We know exactly what's going on now. Um, <laughs> I'm, out, wait, I'm wait, confused. <laughs> <laughs> what, Jen? You said the wand problem. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many... Not so many. There are some <laughs> subtle references to... Uh, yep, sexual I underlined at least one of them in here. Ron goes, it's not all about wand work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, as he's talking about the the book of how to woo women. <laughs> goes, yeah. How to woo witches. Oh, I didn't even and He's like, catch it's not that. just about wand work. <laughs> that was so funny. Um, so what is, the, what is this beginning little story, though? Well, we know that it would, assuming it's happening at the same time, and Harry mentioned the sun had not even risen yet, but here it's already the dawn blue light. We know that Voldemort is either north or east of Harry's location <laughs> um, because it seems like he's already in the dawn, like sun has risen. So I he could be he's out. Had flash. There's always, it's always live. I think it's always live. Oh. Like when he saved Mr. Weasley oh, yeah, yeah, and okay. all that stuff, it feels to be pretty much live okay. except for when Voldemort was interfering and, yeah. you know, um, but we know Grigorovich. How do we know him? Crumb's wand maker. 
Oh, wow. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> did you was... have to look that up or did you just know that? Oh, I knew that. Come on now. <laughs> of course and I only that. know it because we brought it up on one other podcast and I said, what's that other wand maker? I was like, what? And then John, yeah. you were like, oh, I know it. I know it. I know it. And you thought real hard and you got it. But then it got, it was locked in. Yeah. So, so Ollivander, when he was man. doing um, the was wand stuff for Crumb train. and Floor. Because I clearly know the name Gregorovich because of this <laughs> chapter. And I was like, oh, you know, what's oh, the name? Oh, you Mikey? were. Wow. <laughs> well, you did a pretty good job. But either way, I was going to look it up at that point because yeah, it was yeah. fresh. Um but yeah, so Grigorovich is the wand maker that Ollivander like his knew. rival wand maker. Yep, yeah. he's like, oh, Grigorovich, and I forget if Ollivander said something negative about him or just was kind of like, yeah, he's decent. Grigor- he just uses different methods in, than Ollivander does. Mm. So it just oh confirms my gosh, for now us, he's going to wherever they're located. Yeah. So and we Isn't assume Crumb is also mm-hmm. often, you know, this could be a Bulgaria thing, but it's he's from Durmstrang, so it could be something up near school. So point being, it confirms easily the north or east way. Yeah, but mm-hmm. how come they don't have you to tell them? What? <laughs> in this oh, chapter, yeah, right Ron, now? Harry, and Hermione. But like, Harry kind well, of well, knows. Well, he's like, it sounds he's like, familiar. I've heard this before. It sounds familiar. But it is partly Quidditch. It is, it, and that's close. And Harry's going to remember at some point, I hope. Um, maybe they'll be like they did, telling stories they of did the old talk days. about that for a while when they were getting their wands inspected and stuff, too. Yeah. For yeah, the and, Tri-Wizard. Yep. So it will... It was a thing. Yeah. But only um, Harry was there. Nobody else. Hmm. Actually, wait. <coughs> Mrs. Not... Weasley was there and Bill. They weren't there at the wing of the wand ceremony. Ugh, they didn't come in. Or yet. not the wing. Yeah, that was only the, the day before thing. the ceremony. Yeah. Okay. So, only Harry. Harry's the only one that we trust who's still alive, um, who could say that. But also, but then he has got good information because obviously it's he has Ollivander and this guy. Oh yeah, Voldemort. If he actually finds Grigorovich, um, then we're in trouble because um, he's gonna find him. He's mm-hmm. gonna have a lot of wand heft. To figure out like what to do but then i still don't get it like voldemort is is chalking all of this battle up to his wands and saying harry's got a better wand i can't beat him with my wands it's so not necessarily even I a better wand. it's more. just uh it's just he's trying to figure out a way around the wand problem I, I don't know if it's the better or worse but the thing is he's tried other wands and they're not working i know that's yeah. why it's so weird even with lucius wand and the other uh death eater that he asked for the wand so something about it feels strange, but Voldemort something. is convinced it's a wand thing. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, Voldemort's got wand issues. <laughs> wand dysfunction, you might say. <laughs> well, <laughs> what is the solution to his wand dysfunction going to be? Another guy. <laughs> <laughs> what the... <laughs> Oh boy. He's looking for another man to help him. <laughs> oh, I know, Jen. Um, I think um is is there anything more he can do? He might say, Gregorovich, make me another wand, use a different oh, like thing. Your ingredients. Like a custom thing. Yeah, like okay. can you add better ingredients? I, I need better stuff. Um, but what would the better stuff even be? Mm. Like, could he use the parts of other broken wands and say, like, here's well, a piece of Lucius's wand? They and used this one. Vila something, right? Yeah, uh, Flora's wand has a little Vila hair. Is that in not it. with? Ooh, but her? Ollivander said it's too temperamental. Too temperamental. Yeah, but, but that Baltimore's would be pretty temperamental. Yeah, your Gorvich might disagree. Oh, and that's a good point. That's how the wedding is going to get disrupted. Don't, don't, don't. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> if each of the ingredients has to be better, like, could you find a more powerful dragon? Which is bigger heart strings, or an older, wiser unicorn that's been wandering the forest, <laughs> or Floor's mom, <laughs> pretty killer Vila. Um, no, it's her grandma. It was her grandma's hair. Oh, her grandma's hair. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I forgot about I thought, that. Okay. But like the point is, if you can use some of these things, or find um, another phoenix somewhere, so the, or but, a piece but, of Najini or something else. That's why we we think older wands are probably a bit stronger, though, because these these. Um, Where's Dumbledore's wand? Hmm. We said it it might have been buried him. with him. Yeah, but yeah. I think we said it was probably buried with him. I don't know if we know. But these creatures, they <laughs> you they, they die except for us. phoenixes, I guess. But kind of maybe that's a little different one. That's a tougher one. So hmm. 
Yeah, where my Voldemort, where is a Dumbledore's wand? That's an interesting question. <laughs> I guess I guess they buried it with him. Mm. Interesting. Um, but I think uh, the wand maybe a longer lasting wand. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. This has more, more power to okay, it. Okay, this is hard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, or a, a uh, older one. Hmm. Chris, and you're missing all of this. <laughs> I know. So true. Let's leave over there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well. They're they're just laughing their heads off over here. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of oh. it's unavoidable. Yeah, it's unavoidable. Double entendres <laughs> all yeah. over the place. You pass it on to them. <laughs> I guess so. That's so funny. <laughs> I should probably sit up. Um, so, yeah, what do you, do you think that he's going to... What is the solution that Gregor Gorovich has that Ollivander doesn't have? He might just be more cooperative with Voldemort. Hmm. Ollivander might know this stuff, and he might just be good and trying to protect Harry. But maybe Gregorovich could be pressured in different ways or has different methods or is just willing to do what Voldemort asks. Um, <laughs> Chris <and> comes back. <laughs> and here we go. Everyone drink in. <laughs> drink up. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's right. You, never mind. I contribute hmm. nothing to this podcast. <laughs> That's why if we put a, uh, yeah, you were right. If we put a little bit of like liquid luck in you, you're out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> get you some Nailed strong it. coffee. Sorry, Danny. I don't know. We weren't saying anything. We were just uh, were making endless about jokes wands. about Voldemort. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of wand innuendos. Oh, that was the innuendo. Yep. Wand needs a, or a, Voldemort needs a firmer wand, an older wand. <laughs> um, that can last well longer. <laughs> yeah, a wand that can last longer. Um, after this uh, section, so we'll, we'll keep thinking about this, but after this, um, Harry turns 17, he wakes up and he's able to use magic. Do you guys have a, maybe like, I, I remember the first time I drove on my own when I had my license, it was one of the most memorable experiences, mm. like flying down my road. It just felt like the absolute feeling of freedom. Do you guys have like a similar story? It's like getting your license or like when you hit, when you turn 18 or 21 that you had like, this is so cool. And it was just like a revelatory thing. Putting you on the spot. Like a freeing moment. Not necessarily a free moment, but like, oh, I could, I get to do this now. Like, I don't know. I don't um, think so. I don't know. I'm thinking of like when I got my motorcycle, the feeling of riding it for the first mm. time, like that feeling, that thrill, that excitement. But it wasn't like the same as coming of age. Yeah. Um, but it felt similar because... I got the bike before I got the license. So then once I got the license, I could oh, go home nice. and drive it. So it still felt freeing. But I remember driving for the first time and really loving that. But mm, it wasn't the same. But if you get your pilot's license, John. I know, I know. Then uh, we're all going to go for a slowly sweet ride. I know. Oh, wait, where did you drive on your first adventure? Um, where did I drive? It yeah. was to school because I just oh, got nice. it. Uh, I skipped the oh, first hour of school. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went home, got it. My parents were like, you sure you just, we can just drop you off at school and pick you up again? Like, no problem. I'm like, no <laughs> way. I just got my license. <laughs> so I went home and I remember zipping down my road. Like, yes, it was just the best feeling ever. It was so great. <laughs> I don't think I have anything. No moment Not like a, that. Mm-mm. But I am picturing John getting his his airplane license <laughs> and being outside of the plane with a broom. Yeah, that was oh, such like a like funny that thing. Exactly. That was yeah. so funny. <laughs> so funny. He <laughs> make the airplane a big a big broom. That would be so. You guys sweet. have to watch our yeah uh, and, uh, stories follow us on, on Instagram. On, uh, yeah, follow yes. us on Instagram for our stories for some of these inside jokes. Um, I kind of missed it when Harry started doing magic. It didn't even phase me at yeah. all. And then, and then I was like, oh, well, he can like, that's why he's going crazy. Yeah. He's like flexing this new muscle. He's having fun. Uh, yeah, that's gotta magic. be cool. You oh, can do magic wherever really? you want. You missed that? I mean, yeah. Oh yeah. Like when he did like with his glasses and then he tied his shoes and it was like all in knots. And then I was like, what's the deal? And then it clicked and I was like, oh, cause it said he even changed the color on Ron's poster. And then I, yeah. then it, that's when it clicked. Um, he was like so excited. Yeah. Which is cool. 
So many people are putting weird innuendos in chat. I bet they are. (laughs) I do not doubt it for a second. (laughs) Anyway, um, on a different note, uh, Ron says, this isn't your average book. It's pure gold. 12 fail-safe ways to charm witches. Explains everything you need to know about girls. If only I'd had this a year earlier, I'd know, have known exactly how to get rid of Lavender and I would have known how to get going with... Well, Fred and George gave me a copy. I've learned a lot. You'd be surprised. It's not all about <laughs> wand work either. <laughs> yeah. um, and then this is another line that I, I... This is one of my favorites in literally the entire series. Harry sat down, took the square parcel she had indicated and unwrapped it. Inside was a watch, very like the one Mr. and Mrs. Weasley had given Ron for his 17th. It was gold, with stars circling around the face instead of hands. It's traditional to give a wizard a watch when he comes of age, said Mrs. Weasley, watching him anxiously from beside the cooker. I'm afraid that one isn't new like Ron's. It was actually my brother Fabian's, and he wasn't terribly careful with his possessions. It's a bit dented on the back, but the rest of her speech was lost. Harry had got up and hugged her. He tried to put a lot of unsaid things into the hug, and perhaps she understood them because she patted his cheek clumsily when he realized, or when he released her, then waved her wand in a slight random way, causing a half pack of bacon to flop out in the frying pan onto the floor. I love that Mrs. Weasley gives him this. (laughs) And do you know who her brother is? Fabian. Yeah. He was a member of the order yeah. um, that was mentioned. I think Moody had mentioned it when he showed yep. <laughs> the picture of yeah. the old order. Um, if I remember correctly, he's a twin. Yeah. And Fabian and his brother. Fabian and Gideon. Me that look, Kristen? This is, oh, this this is, is a remarkable ridiculous. how you remember I know it's a little ridiculous. But, um, he takes notes, though, and that makes it I easier actually didn't, to remember. I actually didn't I consult my notes for this, but because ago. I took them, it probably registered yeah. more. Yeah, that's what um, I'm saying. But they they died in like some kind of epic way in the battles, but I forget exactly it how. It was five like death five, years right? To bring Oof. them down. Moody says they fought like heroes. Pretty mm-hmm. epic. So she's used to this. Yeah. Mrs. Weasley. But it's, to me, it, it's so beautiful that she's been holding on to this watch for years. Her This is like her brother's, her, yeah. her brother who died. Was Molly, this on him when he died? Yeah. She probably might have taken it off of him and she's giving this to Harry, which is just he so needs memorable. something like that, though. Hmm. He's going into battle just like yeah. they were. And what is Molly's maiden name? Pruitt. Pruitt. Do we know any other Pruitts? Yeah, Maddie Pruitt. (laughs) 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 I don't know this person. Um, Uh, You know who I'm talking about. Is that The Bachelor? Yeah. Maddie Pruitt, that's right. She's a bat. She was on The Bachelor. She was a real popular. I should know it then. (laughs) um, Basketball. That's right, yeah. Um, Date, the pilot. Oh, the pilot. Okay. Hmm. She's married now, so sorry. (laughs) Sorry, guys. Well, <laughs> only one guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I think um, it. so it's possible this watch was also given to Fabian as his coming of age present. Yeah. So I'm just curious what the stars mean if they do anything. Again, mm. this muggle connection of it's gold. It's something that has value. It has like movement in it. I mean, I like watches. So I remember even when the twins were one of them, I think it was Fred or maybe it was George, had a gold watch when playing Quidditch. So again, this like idea of them having like a nice watch that almost feels funny because it's a muggle thing. So will this watch have a power or Mm. something significant later? Um, I'm not saying it's a Horcrux or anything, Um, but... (laughs) Can you imagine? She's putting a Horcrux on Harry's wrist right (laughs) at this moment. But if it was five Death Eaters, but Voldemort wasn't one of them, then it probably couldn't be. Um, I mean, you thought there was a Horcrux in the burrow, right? (laughs) Ooh, I forgot I said that. Is there anything else in the burrow that could be a Horcrux? We kind of explored the whole burrow and all of this. I don't think so. Um, But it is, is, regardless of what... It's a cool gift. uh, Yeah. And I love that line. He tried to put a lot of unsaid things into the hug. Mm -hmm. Like that just like... Oh, it's so great because it sums incredible. up that feeling of like, yeah. or like you don't have the words for it, but you just have a lot of emotion mm-hmm. and you just want the person to understand yeah. how important they are, but you don't know how to say it. And a hug can say all those things. Yep. So, uh, just a beautiful moment. Yep. 
And like Molly giving this to Harry is just another beautiful moment for her as well. She's she's great. She's so great. Um, but what is happening between um is all good on the Lupin Tonks front. No. Although Lupin Thanks smiled as he shook Harry's hand, Harry thought he looked rather unhappy. It was all very odd. Tonks beside him looked simply radiant. That's why it's so I weird. She was pregnant. Whoa. <laughs> Looking radiant. She's glowing. But Interesting. Why is Lupin upset about it? Because he didn't he's worried want if they're going to be they're going like, to be cubs, mixed. wolf wolf pups. <laughs> yeah. That's what Voldemort that says, right? That is a great she... uh, thought. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Wow. That's what I thought. Of she could be pregnant. Interesting. I like that theory way better than mine. <laughs> what was, <laughs> Wait, what was yours? Oh, um, that he was going to be the next headmaster, um, and he was huh. not happy about it, the weight and responsibility, but Tonks is very proud. Oh. Um, I like Jen's theory. Better. I like it way better <laughs> that they're pregnant. That's great. <laughs> Women's intuition there. <laughs> I don't know. It's like they always say that, right? Glowing, but she can't be glowing. Yeah. They do yeah. say that. But both of them leave immediately when they when the ferret, yeah. the, ferret the Weasley comes, the weasel comes. The ferret. <laughs> <laughs> and uh says uh get out of here because the minister of magic's coming so rufus scrimger comes and but why would that look bad i don't because then it looks like they are the order of the phoenix there like why would it be bad if they were there if they're friends with harry i don't know that's what i don't get it's interesting maybe lupin's been through some stuff like there's there could be more like racism going on mm. i mean they're like Greyback and all of his people. They've been doing bad stuff. So Danny's would... favorite lady still works. Works uh, right. <laughs> Wait, who? Danny, you're a favorite oh, lady. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so true. Umbridge, because he shows the little yep. scar, and she hates anything half breed. Yep. So maybe that's why Lupin and like Scrimgeour is just like it. Yeah, Auntie Umbridge. Um, it could be true. Auntie. And so. Well, because you know, she's my aunt, because I always defend her. Um, oh, I thought you and, said uh, aunt like anti. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, I was like, oh, it I sounds like. Yeah. Wait, what did you mean? Same wavelength. Oh, like my aunt. You know, oh. Good yeah. old Auntie Dolores. Oh, see, look. <laughs> I thought you're pressed. I don't know words again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much fireball. A little too little sleep. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know. Poor Lupin. I don't like when he's upset anyway because. He, in general, seems like a pretty positive person. Yeah. He's very encouraging, um, at least to Harry. So to see him stressed kind of stinks. And he should be happy. He should be psyched. Yeah, right? Especially if his wife's pregnant. And if Tonks is... Or he's going to become headmaster. <laughs> all excited, then what's yeah. the deal? I know. Um, but it's a weird world to bring kids into. So if that's <laughs> what's going down. I, I could understand his worry, I guess, mm -hmm. but... Don't worry in public. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's like, he's with Harry. Celebrate the birthday, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Live in the moment. Is there any other reason he wouldn't be down with Scrimgeour? None that I can think of. Yeah. I'm glad you answered your own question. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they just, yeah, maybe they're just at odds with each other. Um, Scrimgeour does seem along the lines of Umbridge's thought hmm. of not liking half-breeds, of trying to eliminate these kind of people true mm -hmm. um but he unravels this parchment which is the will of albus dumbledore and um these are a few lines um he says that law was created to stop wizards passing on dark artifacts said hermione and the ministry is supposed to have powerful evidence that the deceased possessions are illegal before seizing them. Are you telling me that you thought Dumbledore was trying to pass us, pass us something cursed? Are you planning to follow a career in magical law, Miss Granger? Asked Scrimger. Do you actually think that the that he thinks Dumbledore is slightly evil, or he's passing off something cursed? Like, what was the real reason why they're they're uh, so. holding on to this? I think they wanted to see what he was up to because mm. they couldn't figure out because they don't even really know about the order of the phoenix fully right yeah so i think this was their way of trying to figure that out mm. a bit and, nosy. and they know dumbledore has been right about everything about like voldemort coming back and all of this stuff so i think they're they're actually giving dumbledore a lot of credit they just want to know what's up and they don't like that these kids are making decisions so yeah, they wanted to figure out if they could learn anything. It makes sense. I mean, mm. it's just weird. 
So these are the objects that he gives to. We'll go over these. However, Scrimger did not seem to be listening. He put his hand inside his cloak and drew out a drawstring pouch much larger, much larger than the one Hagrid had given Harry. From it, he removed a scroll of parchment, which he unrolled and read aloud. The last will and testament of Alvis, Percival, Wolfric, Brian, Dumbledore. Yes, here we are. To Ron Ronald Billius Weasley, I leave my deluminator in the hopes that he will remember me when he uses it. Scrimger took from the bag an object that Harry had seen before. It looked something like a silver cigarette lighter, but it had, he knew, the power to suck all the light from a place and restore it with a simple click. Scrimger leaned forward and passed the deluminator, deluminator to Ron, who took it and turned it over in his fingers, looking stunned. That is a valuable object, said Scrimger, watching Ron. It may even be unique. Certainly, it is of Dumbledore's own design. Why would he have left you an item so rare? Why did he leave Ron the Deluminator? <laughs> so he can use it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> That's coming I mean, up with uh, all the good points right now. All right, next one. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it has to be part of this big riddle. Has to be yeah. more. So... He says, in the hope that he will remember me when he uses it. I know. I was trying to think of that. So if Ron's using it, but remembering Dumbledore, is there a time where it's going to be darkness and he has to think of Dumbledore? Or a time where he's going to put all the lights back and then think of Dumbledore? But like, how does that help in some riddle scenario, some mm. horcrux situation? Maybe you remember Dumbledore while you turn the lights off and he appears. Mm. in the mirror i was thinking the mirror is this like trying to send a message to harry but indirectly like what was it that's on the snitch again some little close when it closes i open yeah. it to close we'll talk about that in a bit yeah so a bit. could in all like, of these like messages minutes, be to minutes. each other <laughs> do they all work together do the three of them have to work together in order to use their I different like, riddly yeah, things. Because he kept saying it was also interesting because Harry he said tell them. Remember how Dumbledore said to tell his friends about everything, everything that's going yeah, on. Right, and now right, he's he giving them these things, these items to use together. Yeah, you're right. Dumbledore. So he was, was like very already specific. setting it up for yeah. them to like work together. Because this was the next thing that happened, the, the next object he gave. To Miss Hermione Jean Granger, I leave my copies of the Tales of Beetle the Bard in the hopes that she will find it entertaining and instructive. Scrimgeour now pulled out the bag, pulled out a bag, a small book that looked as ancient as the copy of Secrets of the Darkest Arts upstairs. Its binding was stained and peeling in places. Hermione took it from Scrimgeour without a word. She held the book on her lap and gazed at it. Harry saw that the title was in runes. He had never learned to read them. As he looked, a tear splashed onto the embossed symbols. Why do you think Dumbledore left you that book? Miss Granger asked Scrimger. Or could it be like he has to, they have to use that light for the book? Interesting, yeah. Mm. Like maybe there's something, instructions in the book, and Ron has to use the thing to turn the lights off and then the snitch thing yeah i'm surprised they didn't look at the snitch in the dark already but i oh. imagined all of this stuff as having to take place somewhere else yeah me like too, they man. can't just like come up with some magical thing here but they're gonna get somewhere and it's all gonna click like one of my thoughts was go to dumbledore's office and try and use these things but that might be hard good catch <gasps> i save that was a great catch thanks um, but maybe there's somewhere else where the Horcruxes are that they have to mm. bring these things and Dumbledore knows. Could, could like, maybe this is wild, but could the, the Deluminator destroy a Horcrux in some way? Could a Horcrux be light? No, because it's the opposite of light. <laughs> it's dark. Hmm. Could the Deluminator do something more powerful by pulling in like a Patronus or something. Something else that's made of light. Yeah, like could it capture a soul? Oh, that seems weird. Hmm. Because right now we're just thinking it it pulls light in and that's what Dumbledore used it for. 
on Privet Drive back in the day. So <laughs> you're right. What happened? We're just a bunch of burping kids today. <laughs> Fireball really does it to us. Because um, this is this is the last thing that uh, he gives before he says he can't give him the sword. But he says to Harry James Potter, he read, and Harry's insides contracted with a sudden excitement. I leave the snitch he caught in his first Quidditch match at Hogwarts as a reminder of the rewards of perseverance and skill. As Scrimger pulled out the tiny walnut-sized golden ball, its silver wings fluttered rather feebly, and Harry could not help feeling a definite sense of anticlimax. <laughs> Why? <What? laughs> wow. Why did Dumbledore leave you this snitch, asked Scrimger. <laughs> There's just a lot of, a lot of illusions here. <laughs> Innuendos. You're um, on your own, too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's reading the chat, that's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he says, Dumbledore left you a second bequest, Potter. What is it? Asked Harry, excitement rekindling. Scrimgeour did not bother to read from the will this time. The sword of Godric Gryffindor, he said. I wish he at least read the will for this part mm. in case Dumbledore had some hidden, like, other helpful yep. words in there. Yeah. So to just sum it up is a double whammy because we don't get any more of Dumbledore's words and Harry doesn't get the sword. Yeah, I know. And you're just curious, like, why these objects? What does, um, again... What does it say on it again? Um, I, which one? Because it says, I open at the close. Harry, um... Harry, he nearly dropped the snitch in surprise and excitement. Hermione was quite right. Engraved upon the, the smooth golden surface, where seconds before there had been nothing, were five words written in the thin, slant, slanting handwriting that Harry recognized as Dumbledore's. I open at the close. What does that mean? I open at the close. I was thinking it might be a place and like, the snitch will open up with a message. So hmm. you're thinking the snitch itself opens up still and it could contain something? Yeah. Could it I uh, hope so. Like you said it contained a message. What what else do you think it could contain? What would the message be? More clues to hmm. help them. They have nothing. They literally have no instructions. So anything would be helpful. Yeah, it's true. Could Dumbledore know where they have to go? Like, I almost thought of it as a clue in a place. They're going to get somewhere and this is going to be, it's going to be a clue that, you know, Ron has to close the the put out or the deluminator and then it does something. But if it's the snitch, I open at the close. The close of what? Close of the year? Close of the book? Like when Hermione's done reading through her book and closes it, like then the snitch will be initiated into like something else. Hmm. The next thing. Um, I don't know. The close. What else closes? The closing bell of the stock market. <laughs> They're going to the stock market. That's the next chapter. Dang Excellent. It. Knew, huh? <laughs> um, the Gringotts stock market. Because again, these objects are just weird. You don't know what the heck is going on in Dumbledore's mind. You wish you did. And again, mm -hmm. even there's the one point where they, they're talking about the sword and um, what's what was the line that I think Ron said, like, maybe we could just or have you have we tried using the sword on Voldemort or something like that? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Sticking him with the sword. That probably isn't going to work. But what what is going on even with that idea? Like, why is he given the sword? Why are they given these the ob these objects? And then, mm. is there if there's a message inside the snitch? What is this message? Instructions to find Horcruxes, or to kill Voldemort once they've found Horcruxes. Anything I would take. Hmm. <laughs> like I said, they have nothing. It just feels yeah, weird though because. Nothing instructions could be given so many different ways i was hoping the snitch would have more than just instructions like what i don't know but like like a dagger that you could has the poison <laughs> in it i mean i guess but if it's like a it's the size of a walnut like what else could be in there actually that's not true because we already know um 
things can have more space, like the Weasley's car or the yeah. tent. They can have more space than what it is. So they hide in it. It could be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They just step <laughs> into nice. it and they hide. All the horror. It will open when it closes. <laughs> when Voldemort is dead, it'll open. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. When it closes. Or when something closes in. Oh. When um. Hogwarts closes. Hmm. Oh. It's like the uh, ultimate, like if everything goes south and Hogwarts ends up closing, well, maybe Hogwarts for the school close. year for Christmas. Voldemort's, Voldemort's real aim of... and ambition is education. It's mm. magical education, but it's just magical mm. education with only pure bloods. Oof. <laughs> Would it ever close? Yeah. Do they say close the Ministry of Magic? Close? No, mm. it wouldn't close. It would yeah. be overthrown or something. Is there anything else that closes? Hmm. We'll come back to this. These are uh, these Ugh. these are the mysteries of this book, guys. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of mysteries in this end. book. Hmm. Um, How any... quickly did you read this book the first time? Oh, a day. It was no, it wasn't a day. It was probably two days. <laughs> <laughs> it was quick though. It was, but there there also was a point. One of my friends was the same. The first time she read the end, um, the the seventh book. She paced herself through it and she went very slow, especially through like the last 10 chapters. She said when she was on the last chapter, she said she would read a page and go away and cry and like didn't <laughs> read anything for a full day and then would come back and read another page because she didn't want the story to end. Oh my and I was gosh. somewhat similar. I didn't read this in two days. It took me a lot longer because I didn't want it to end. I was like in the middle of these chapters Probably took me, I probably spent a month on it because I didn't want to just like consume it all in one take. I was right. like, I, 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 want, I just don't want this to end. I want to be lost in this world for a little bit longer. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, How yeah. cute. We will wish these books were longer. Yeah, exactly. Oh my guys, gosh, I said that at the beginning. That? I'm like, these mm-hmm. books are ginormous. I know. Don't you wish they were longer though? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> um, right. what no, if the sword of Gryffindor does something at Godric's hollow because it's Godric hmm. Gryffindor's hollow could it is it is this like uh, the sword in the stone kind of thing is he going to put this in a stone and it's going to like it's a key you know, yeah maybe how is he going to get the sword <laughs> Asio Asio whatever it's spelled maybe can you do that on magical objects mm. yeah well, at least brooms you can. How far away? And magic do we? books. Hmm. But it'd be ooh, that'd be tough. They might have charms you to protect can't it. Do that? Cause yeah, maybe not. I don't know. It, right? Yeah, I guess. And then if that if Godric's Hollow really is like Godric Gryffindor, it's possible there's more stuff going on there. Mm. And then it's not just a place of Harry's parents' death, but there could be like bigger things happening. Mm. Um, but is there a Helga's hollow or a <laughs> Salazar's hollow? <laughs> Salazar's mm. den. Mm. Helga's hutch. Hut. Ooh, I like or that. Or hut. Yeah. That's better. Mm. Rowena's row house. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else in this chapter before we close? Do our last final ones. I like the line. Ron, you know full well uh, Harry and I were brought up by Muggle, said Hermione. We didn't hear stories like that when we were little. We heard Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and Cinderella. What's that, an illness, asked Ron. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we all don't come down with Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like that they made Hagrid sleep in the neighboring field. <laughs> like, just stay real close, Hagrid. Yeah. Like, maybe like... Yeah. right next to the house yeah. not like a neighboring field it felt too far away um i liked his little gift to harry though i was like that's oh yeah that was a great, great yeah. gift yeah, that's really cute that's a good yep. good idea high quality only yeah. the owner can retrieve it was a pouch a necklace and only the mm-hmm. owner can retrieve the contents in it oh. so like no one be able to take out whatever really was a great was. idea <laughs> yeah but i got nothing left in the chapter yeah that's uh this this uh, chapter kind of sets the rest of the book up. You're you're like looking at these objects, and it oh, gives yeah. you the, it gives you the Horcrux discussion. So you're like, 
I mean, we get that before. Like we know they're looking for Horcrux, but this one really sets it up. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, we have to find something that destroys them. We have to find the Horcruxes. You don't know what the heck these objects are. Oh my are. gosh, he could put the Horcruxes in the pouch that Hagrid gave and no one else could take no them. No one can take them back. There you go. That's, if that's only if they all. can't destroy them right away, but <laughs> I'm afraid they won't be able to destroy them right away. <laughs> so hopefully anything. Harry can just collect time. them, you know, while they try and figure out mm-hmm. how to. Wait, could Voldemort re- be remorseful of killing someone if he finds out later that the person he killed had some greater value for evil, of course. But then I think it has to be true remorse. True remorse. Yeah. Not Sorrow just like, oh, I wish done. I didn't kill them so I could do something yeah. selfish. Has Sorry for what you've done, like not for what you did. You wish it was like better. But mm-hmm. you he could have better. remorse if all these killings make Harry stronger. Yeah, but it's still evil motives. And that is that true remorse? Mm hmm. Yeah. I think it'd be nice if there was just no way to be remorseful for him. There isn't. There almost isn't. I don't think <laughs> yeah, he has yeah, a capacity yeah, maybe not. for remorse. Hermione was even saying that. Like, they're, you just, they, he's just, just beyond trying. that. But I'm just curious if anyone else... he's not else... fully human. He's part love potion. <laughs> he's yeah. part love potion. That was a fascinating right. idea, too. Like, he he is the product of a love potion, so... That's like he a has, curse. Yeah, so he has, like, Oof. something cursed upon him. Yeah, such a fascinating discussion. Yeah, discussion for that one. Maybe that's why Rab knows so much about Horcruxes because he created one too, mm. but he actually was remorseful, mm. and that's why he joined his soul back, and that's why he was so good at finding Voldemort's because he had gone down that path too. Mm. Mm. So many directions. So know. many things. We'll we'll keep going. We'll keep keep plodding along with this book. But give me your your hot tamale. Obviously. I think hot obvious. It's an obvious hot tamale. That yeah. was <laughs> <obvious> <laughs> one. You know, uh, you give me your hot tamale. Your house Voldemort's cup winner and favorite moment. And I like Ginny. Wait, wait. Go over that again. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was rapid fire. We didn't have to wait for that. Seriously, all three of them. Yeah. What? All I heard was I like Ginny. Yeah. No, because I said the guys were obsessed with the wands. <laughs> Oh. So that's their hot tamales. Yeah, the wands that. are the hot tamale in this chapter. Yeah. yeah. It's not all about wand work, though. <laughs> so true. Huh. Yeah, Ginny, hot tamale. <laughs> Respect. <sighs> yeah. But even Harry a little. I mean, you know. What do you mean? Well, teamwork makes the dream work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he must have been a pretty hot tamale if Ginny was calling him over like that, you know? Oh, yeah. All right. My hot tamale is Ginny, too. I think Ginny is a clear hot tamale winner in this one. Yeah. Ginny. Ginny all around? Mm-hmm. What's your guys' favorite moment? She was the OG anyway. Mm-hmm. She was. Uh, favorite mm. moment. She was the OG. <laughs> that moment. <laughs> Has Jen ever voted for anybody but Ginny for a hot <laughs> award? That's the real question. Um, rarely. They don't deserve it. <laughs> yeah. She's the only They have to tamale. beat her, and then most people don't. <laughs> Not my mm. hot tamale. Favorite moment, favorite moment. There are like lovely moments in this where like they're all just together mm. in certain things. So I got you. I thought it was really sweet. Togetherness. Like the um telling Harry that they were like all in. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Yeah, you're right. Yep. That line where he says he wanted to tell them what that meant to him, but he simply could not find words important enough. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that's the line I was just looking for. Such a good line. Yeah. I was like that. And then the one you said before about Mrs. About Weasley. the hug. And yeah, yeah, those two were mine. That Mrs. Weasley moment, that hug was my favorite. Again, because it's like, it's also just a, a perfect, um, uh, like test or perfect show of how good of a writer you are. It's just perfect subtext right there. You don't put too much in. You put literally one line, two books earlier about, Pruitt, this guy who who mm-hmm. died and he died and he, he fought like a hero. He died. It's like took five Death Eaters to take this guy down, and then all of a sudden you learn in this one off of one little thing that Molly mentions that uh, Fabian was my brother, and then you put mm. the two together and you're like, dang, such good writing, such great yeah. subtext in your writing, yep. and then just what it meant for Molly to give that was just, she's just a remarkable person. She's she's great. I love her. 
So what? Who's your favorite character? Who wins the house <laughs> cup? Also, wait, Jen. Jen did mind. you say what your favorite moment was? What was your favorite moment? You already forgot. <laughs> um, the I uh, you like kicked off the uh, the Hermione and uh, Ron saying that they were all in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was a good yeah. moment. Yeah. So good. I think for me it was when the will was being read. It like it felt like reconnecting with mm-hmm. Dumbledore, even though we're still confused. There was a lot of hope built into that that yeah. I liked. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. that's true. All right, who's who wins house cup? Harry? Are we allowed to say that? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like Harry rarely wins it, to be completely honest. Yeah. Mm. I still feel like he didn't do too much. Yeah. But he does feel very confident, even to start off these two chapters, when Mrs. Weasley is like, are you sure you didn't like misunderstand Dumbledore and what he mm. wanted? And Harry's like, no, I know what we have to yeah. do. Like this new me. confidence, he does feel like he's he's growing up a little bit. I want to give it to Hermione. When she was oh, summoning yeah. the Horcrux books. Yep. Yeah, that was just that oh, alone. Is so wise, so right. smart, so, yeah. so good of her. And that's a game changer. That yeah. could save the world. Yeah. You know. So. And if she isn't in part of this group, they are dying <laughs> literally as soon as they take take a step out of this house. <laughs> like she's yeah. putting everything together, putting all the books together, putting the plan together. Really, she is like the soul of this team right now, the brains yeah. of this team. So I'm giving it to Hermione too. Yeah. Hermione yep. wins cup. I'll flip flop. <laughs> <laughs> Hermione slash Harry. Yeah. Works. What All right. It works. Um. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I wanted to give it to Dumbledore because he was from yeah. the grave doing yeah. some good stuff. And then honorary like Mrs. Weasley. I feel bad. She's so stressed. Yeah. She's doing so much. I feel like in her mind... She put the whole house on her shoulders. She's like trying to carry everyone Aww. along. Um, so I do feel for her. Yeah, um, that is pretty cool. Yeah. All right, Mrs. Weasley, because I don't think I've ever given this to her. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's her first one. We'll, we'll award yeah, the house Mrs. cup Weasley. first Mrs. Weasley win. <laughs> hmm. Well, thanks for joining us on our journey of Harry Potter and the first time readers. You know, I didn't even think Mrs. Weasley did it that great, except when you were summing it up, giving the watch and how important of a gift. Yeah, I was yeah. like, ah, oh, man, you're right. Because she she's like working her tail off in this, these chapters. And then on top of that, she's having these heartfelt moments where she's giving yeah. a watch that's been yep. in her family for years. It's just incredible. She's like, she's the best. And we don't, we it's kind of fun. resist it because she's preventing um, Ron, yeah, Harry, sure, and Hermione yeah. from yeah. doing their thing. But that comes from yeah. love and wanting yep. to protect them. And she doesn't understand. So I get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>